Okay, welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board, Board of Health and Sewer Commissioners meeting for January 27th, 2023 at 3 p.m. Um, we had moved this meeting because of the weather earlier on Wednesday was, was a little nasty. So um, just to keep everyone safe, we came here on a Friday afternoon. So this meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022, which extended the governor's March 12th, 2020 order uh, suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20, and until March 31st, 2023. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy of the public, the meeting or hearing will not be suspended or terminated if te technical problems uh, interrupt the virtual broadcast um, unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with a particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the Town of Deerfield will host the meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices with remote participation detailed um, uh, below, which is on our agenda, which you can find um, on the Town of Deerfield's website by the calendar. You can just click on that. You'll see a, a link uh, to a Zoom meeting you could, you could click on to join by Zoom, or there's a toll-free number if you'd like to dial in. It's 833-548-0276. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580. And should you need a passcode, it's 570012. Um, attendees should mute their phones. If you're on a landline, you can hit star six to mute and unmute. So just keep muted unless you're asking a question and wait to for others to finish speaking before you speak and just state your name and um, and uh, who you are and and uh, we'll recognize you. So um, our agenda tonight, we have, um, I'll call the meeting to order. We have public comment. Um, if anybody has anything they'd like to address, um, we do have a couple of appearances tonight, but if there's anything on the agenda, anybody in the public would like to talk about or anything else they'd like to bring up, not welcome to do that now. Hey, Lily. Oh, uh, is that Anna Lee? Oh, Anna Lee. Hey, how are you? Here we are. I don't know if this is a time or not. I um, am interested in uh, putting in a strong word for uh, the uh, <clears throat> high priority listing of um, starting a review of our master plan with DLTA funds. Sure. Um, so um, I'm right there this, with you. Good. Uh, this is, yep. you know, step one in um, in a comprehensive project, but certainly that will help us understand more where our community residents are. So thank you if that can be sure. the case. And then the other thing, I think, as um, you'll be going through budgets later on, um, <clears throat> I've been working some with um, with Casey, with the planning board, talking, trying to talk with various people about um, how we can move forward with stronger um, uh stronger staffing for a planning function um potentially uh a well go for go for the gusto a, a full-time planner i know that our budgeting is going to be very challenging this year but um i think a planner could help with economic development writing grants monitoring the grants and also um helping relieve town staff so um putting in a strong word for that Great, thank you. Thank you for your advocacy. We, I think we all, or at least I, I certainly agree with you on both those. Thank items. you. Yes, if, my, if if money came from the sky, right? yes, exactly. <laughs> thank you. Have a hat and catch it. Yep. Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm just gonna uh, skip forward just a real quickly to take care of a piece of um, business that we need to get done so that it can be uh, sent out. This is the um, we have, uh, members here have a. Uh, we had an open meeting law complaint. We had a um, reply back from our attorney. Have you all read that? Um, and just, we wanted to give this a blessing so K Casey could send out a response on that. Do you, you well, want to- Do you have the official- Yeah, one? here, I you can go ahead and take a look at that. Um, <clears throat> and it was- it? Did you read it already, Carolyn? Yeah, I think I just want to make sure there was no changes to it, to yeah. the original one. Yep. It looks like it was the same one that I saw earlier. Yes. Yeah. I had asked to have it sent out so everyone could get a chance yeah. to read it before the meeting. I'm, and... I, I'm okay with it. Great. Right. Uh, because it doesn't look like there's any changes. Yeah. I just hadn't read it. So do we need a motion? Um, yeah. I would make a, a motion to approve the letter from her. A motion to approve the draft letter about the open meeting violation uh, complaint. Thank and, you. And I will second that. 
Great. Any further discussions? Anything you need to add, Casey, or we're good to go? Okay, great. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you, Casey. Appreciate the help on that. Thank you. Great. Um, so uh, let's see. We have um, our first our appearance tonight. Um, uh, we're going to work. We're going to talk about senior housing ad hoc committee update. Lily Dwight was going to um, talk about that, but Lily's working today. So Pam Prebmore is here and was going to have us um, talk a little bit about it. So welcome, welcome, and come on up and state your name and what you want to talk about. Pam, thank you so much. For Thanks coming. for coming. Nobody can hear you. Can, can you, you please get to the John, mic? Make sure her mic's Which on. Mic? Yeah. Drag them both. Yeah. The both both lights are on. So okay, good. Use the one to my left. I can do that. Great. Oh, oh I can hear better. you better. That's better. Okay. Thank you. Pam. Again, thank you very much for allowing me to come speak to you today. Uh, my name is Pamela Predmore, better known as Pam. I live at 36 Graves Street here in town, and I'm the newest member of the Ad Hoc Town uh, Senior Housing Committee. And um, thank you very much. I appreciate that. An appreciated uh, member. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Work. Um, I'll just say really quickly that one of the reasons I wanted to be on the committee was that um, I worked for the Amherst Housing Authority for 21 years and managed elderly and handicapped and family housing. In fact, I had been a member, uh, sorry, I had been a tenant for a number of years as well. So I've thought perhaps my personal and professional experience might be helpful to the committee. Very grateful. It for has. That. It has. Been. Huge, hugely Thank you. helpful. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, so I'm, I'm sorry that you weren't able to get the um, ad hoc senior housing committee annual report a uh, copy has only just been given to you. So with your permission, I'd yep. just like to review it, um, which also would help anybody who's listening to or will be listening to the uh, this committee meeting. Um, the Ad Hoc Senior Housing Committee meets on a weekly basis and is making considerable progress towards creating affordable housing for Deerfield seniors. Also in our priorities, we worked, we have worked diligently to be collaborative with other boards and committees, such as the Connecting Communities Initiative, CCI, in order to achieve Deerfield wild, wide, Deerfield wide goals. Specifically, we've completed the market survey that demonstrated strong interest in two bedroom affordable and subsidized senior housing. We had a much lower return rate this time, only 10%, rather than that that was received uh, with the 2012 survey done um, where in which they got 30%. Presumably this was because the survey was confused with the senior center survey and some folks didn't respond because they thought they already had. Due to fiscal constraints, FERCOG, the Franklin Regional uh, County, Council of Government. Count, thank yep. you very much, Tim. Franklin Regional Council on Government limited us to an online survey, which may have been difficult for some of our older adults to compete. Complete, sorry. We tried to mitigate this by holding multiple supported sessions with laptops at the senior center and, in fact, at the senior picnic, printing paper copies and placing them in town hall and posting on Deerfield Now. And some of us actually delivered, hand delivered uh, hard copies to our neighbors and collected them to make sure that they got counted as well. Um, we applied for the Complete Neighborhoods Grant for support in municipal campus design services for a cohesive design. That's forty to fifty thousand um, dollars. We also uh, support the Elm Circle work to retain affordable workforce housing in Deerfield up to 30,000. We completed the senior housing demographic and market analysis, which determined number one, the need. Over 32% of our population is 55 years or older. The age group projected to have the most significant growth of 30.2% is 55 to 74 years of age. Both our renters and homeowners are what's known as rent burdened, such i.e. 
50% of homeowners pay more than 50% of their income for the cost of their housing. That's called severely rent burdened. 40.8% of renters pay more than 30% of their income for housing, also called rent burdened. So we also uh, determine demand. Wait times for affordable housing in the Valley are six months to two years or more. The high occupancy and long wait, wait times demonstrate an immediate demand for additional affordable housing in our study area. None of the existing slash competing affordable developments contain two bedroom units at the income level our community survey indicates we need. We also initiated site evaluation assessment work such as wetlands delineation, fire flow tests for Conway and North Main Street. I understand that means there's enough water in case there's a fire to uh, yes. take care of that. Um, flagged utilities, sewer, gas, electric, and water on the munip municipal campus and documenting and mapping the utilities on the municipal campus. For the general public, I would just like to say that there is here a um, trifold display of what we're referring to when we talk about the municipal campus, but it, it includes numerous buildings right here on the corner. Um, let's see. Upcoming, continuing to work with the CCI, that's again, that's the um, Connect, Connect Connecting Communities Initiative um, and the CCI Municipal Campus Subcommittee to support the quote, campus unquote development with senior housing as an in integral component. We are applying for the next round of CPC money and that's what we're asking you to support us in, in that application. Um, two, complete the campus physical survey and documentation, develop multiple site and building proposals, develop a plan for and engage in community outreach. For example, um, I will be doing a presentation to the South Deerfield Women's Club at their March meeting. There will be other community outreach events in which we hope that anyone who has opinions, questions, whatever, will we'll come forward and um, talk with us. We're working with the planning board in support of accessory dwelling units. We're identifying sites for smaller cluster housing. We're working with existing subsidized and affordable properties to retain our good standing in order to qualify for state and federal money, which I understand uh, requires that type of housing. So thank you. That's that's the report that we have. We just wanted an update. And um, I, I would like to thank Kevin Scarborough for all the help he did um, flagging some of those utilities so that we could, in fact, um, you know, cut our expenses, as well as the South Deerfield Water District did the flow tests. So there was no cost to the town. So that was really wonderful. Um, so I would like to make a motion that we send a letter of support for the senior housing to complete their work on the site feasibility um, in support of the CPA application. Um, and that's really what Pam and Anna Lee and Lily would like us to do. Um, we have a small but robust committee. Experienced, very that experienced meets committee. Every week. And so we are we are chugging ahead and we are bound and determined to make this happen. We so thank I'm, you for your work. That's I'm, a lot of work. And, and I'm really experience. excited. Yep. So, I'll second the motion and then during discussion, I have a question. Uh, sure. Okay. Any further discussion? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Pam, do you or Carolyn know the amount of money you're seeking from CPC? Um, we're trying to still sort that out um, because... Um, we're we're not we're trying to not duplicate any work with other people and i don't believe we have a final figure yet from the engineers is that in fact true pam as yeah to my to my knowledge uh, that, that is was not as of true. Last and the whole point of working with the cci is to make sure that nobody's double 
yep. looking or, you know, right. we're trying to keep the costs down as much as we can by working together on this whole campus issue. Yep. I believe it's somewhere in the 40,000 range and maybe I, it'll go up. I would, I would, I think we were going to add 25% uh, to it based on our experience so far. So it would be around 45 to 50,000, I believe is mm -hmm. what we were thinking of mm -hmm. with that buffer built in just because um, it seems we, we ask for money and then within months it's outdated price. So, but this would be, um, for campus wide, yep, uh, work. Yep, obviously because yeah. we we haven't cited where senior housing is going to be. There there was some suggestion, you know, connected to the church. There's some suggestion out here in the back. So um, the idea is to come up with a couple of different. Once you do the flag the delineations, um, you know, we have a couple of different options. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> so. That's fine with me. Okay. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. Thank you, Thank you very, very much. Thank you for the update. Thank you, Pam, for coming in. Really appreciate yeah, it. Thank you, Pam. I, I appreciate you covering for Lily. She was worried about trying to get here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And, and thank you, Anna Lee, too. And our next um, next appearance is Jennifer Remillard. How are you, Jennifer? Hi, I'm well. Thank you. How's everyone? Very good. So nice to see you. Nice to see everyone. So I apologize if Luna starts barking. Um, I I already <laughs> finished my work day, but I wanted to make sure not to miss this. So no, no, I appreciate you coming. I know we were expected for Wednesday and um, shook everybody up. So um, no problem. Yeah. So um, what did you want to address today? Um, so the reason that I wanted to <clears throat> excuse me be, make an appearance today was um, in 2021. The three towns, including Deerfield, signed on with FERCOG um, in Life Path for their Mass in Motion grant um, to become a part of that. And I believe Rachel uh, Stoller had recently presented to, um, to Deerfield and the other two town select boards to discuss the um, needs assessment that FERCOG had received their results. And um, we, myself, uh, Fran Fortino, Rachel Stoller, Carol Foote, and a few. <laughs> Sorry, a few others. Um... Right back at it. <laughs> you must have somebody in the window. That's fine. Go ahead. We're, we're so, okay. anyways, um, so they presented to all of you, and when we met, uh, we had a really good discussion. And unfortunately, their results were very minimal, um, just like Pam had said in the senior housing uh, presentation. Um, you know, most people who participated in the needs assessment that the senior center had put out um, previously had been, we received over 1,300 responses, whereas Fergog received very minimal, I don't even think 100 from South County Region, Deerfield, Oatley, and um, Sunderland. So the reason that... Um... <laughs> she says, one minute. Okay, we can wait. Um, did Have you re read through this at all? I just... Um... I, I had read to her email she sent out on the 20th and yep. talking about this. And I'm just trying to get. My... Sorry about that. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Um, so in the email that I had sent out, uh, I attached a memo. Basically, the concern um, in the group that we discussed was that the results from FERCOG study were very minimal and really couldn't uh, portray the actual needs that we had received during the um, UMass study. And those needs assessments uh, did have the similar top issue with transportation and food insecurity for some of the major region or reasons in the community. And we, uh, during our recent meeting, we felt there would be a couple of different things. Each town uh, would receive $4,230 as part of this, um, as part of this uh, grant that FERCOG received in Life Path, that would be a combination or a combined total of twelve thousand six hundred ninety dollars. So they've already but, received this this money. FERCOG has. Yes. 
-hmm. they have. And what needs to happen at this point is work groups need to be established. And this stuff needs to be completed by uh, the end of June of this fiscal year. Okay. So the concern is if each individual town worked, on, um, you know, in a silo, that mm -hmm. the bureaucratic red tape would take a little while, you'd have to post for a job, and, and etc, in order to get that work group started. So at the end of this meeting, I had suggested, um, if we, the senior center were to undertake um, the needs assessment information, which is something we are already working on based upon the UMass information, and to come together to um, facilitate having the outreach coordinator conduct the work groups on a Tuesday or Thursday in the Sunderland location or off hours, depending on in the evening, we could come together, utilize this fund to help offset some of our expenditures, which are already in existence because this money can be used for not just salary, but it can be used for a uh, rent of our space. It can be used for providing food or childcare for any of the volunteers who want to participate in the work group. Um, so it's, it's not something that would necessarily be an addition to our workload. It's something we're already working on. Um, I reached out to all three members of the board of oversight and had sent it to the town administrators for each of the communities. And I got a positive response from Waitley already. Um, I'm following up with Sunderland and I am here presenting to you asking if you would support us working together. We wouldn't have to create a separate IMA because we already have one for the senior center. Um, and it would be beneficial all around because we're focusing mostly on the transportation and the uh, food insecurity um, which is something really largely being um, felt in our communities. So just to recap, uh, my understanding, uh, there's funding from FERCOG to each of the towns to do this work, small potatoes in each town, but we could group it together, have the, the senior center outreach coordinator and director work on this, get this completed by June. There's no additional funding from any of our towns that we need to add to this and we would get further along in the work we're already doing. Yes. That's in addition to that, there, if this work continued past the end of June 30th, um, FERCOG has received uh, the funding to do this for two additional years. Mm -hmm. So if we needed to continue, you know, for the next, uh, for the, to for a total of three years, you know, within those fiscal constraints, um, we would be able to continue to work on this. What's um, the so unintending, what are the unintended consequences? Is there anything we're missing here? It just sounds positive to me. Right? No, there are, um, you know, the only additional things that would be required would be reporting, which would be um, something I would undertake. It wouldn't be anything that the town uh, towns would have to do. It would just be another reporting piece um, and anything else. It would be a positive where we would create, you know, work groups within the communities to hopefully um, receive information from seniors in our community or other members of our community who don't already participate and engage. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the majority of this is is positive. Okay. And you feel like you have, you and uh, Chris would have the bandwidth to do that work? Without yes. Uh, with the support of the Board of Oversight and with your select board, uh, you had increased Chris's hours to 35. We're just waiting for the personnel board mm -hmm. um, next meeting to vote on that. So I feel that this would be doable within um, both of our work hours. You have questions? Um, I just want to, it's really a comment. I just hope that you would reach out to CISA. Uh, I know that um, Joe Comerford is filing a bill bill on getting local produce in the, you know, to our local communities. So um, we want to make sure that uh, if people are food insecure, they have the opportunity locally to get food. So um, yes, um, we... I know you're, you're aware of it maybe, but just mm -hmm. keep that in the back of your mind that there is going to be more support for that going forward too. 
Yes, we actually, uh, we currently partner with Atlas Farms and every Wednesday we receive fresh produce from them. Uh, we've had that program going on for uh, more than a year. We also have our food pop-up truck on the second Wednesday of every month. We also have the food pantry at the Sunderland location. And we're looking at um, addressing more, as you all are probably aware, the SNAP benefit um, that was increased for COVID ends March 2nd. But the other wonderful thing that we have done um, on in the beginning of October, we became online for our partnership with SNAP and Department of Transitional Assistance with UMass Partnership to be able to process SNAP applications at our center and do recertifications as well. So we are um, definitely in process with that, but there are a lot of other avenues. So thank you for sharing about Senator Comerford's bill in CISA. Yeah, thank you. Thank I you appreciate very much. It. it is a huge concern, even in our community. So do do we need a motion uh, to approve this? Or I, I will make the motion to approve um, supporting this grant. Okay. As presented. Okay. And I'll second it. Thank you, Tim. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you for your work on this. Appreciate it, Jennifer. Thank you very much. And if there's any um, additional paperwork or whatnot that needs to be done, I will work through Casey. Sounds great. Sounds Thank good. you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you, Have a good weekend. Um, okay. So that, that, um, select board announcements, reports. Uh, we should probably um, tell people what we did in Boston. Yes, I would love that. So do you want to go or do you want me to go? Or? Why don't you I, start? I'm just really thrilled. Um, it was really nice to get back with uh, this past week. Um, Thursday, we went down. Friday, Saturday, we had our um, Massachusetts Municipal Association conference. Um, it was really great to get back with all the other members of all the other towns and cities. And um, they uh, put on a lot of um, training classes um, and the vendors were there. We got to meet with a bunch of people and um, each of us will kind of hit on that. Um, I really, um, I just really enjoyed getting back and networking with people and having the time to learn what people are doing in their communities. And 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 we obviously we heard from the the governor, the lieutenant governor, um, uh, Senator Markey, Senator Warren, um, kind of listening to what their their uh, plan is and what the governor's plan is and what what things they're working on, housing, um, other other entity, you know, other items or initiatives on their part. Um, and we all also had a uh, a small gathering on Saturday morning of the Western Mass and rural communities talking about um, we, we we are planning a um, a Western Mass conference similar uh, Western Mass conference on different items and talking about how to drive some of that federal and state funding west um, so we can we can get our as Tim says our fair share of the fair share amendment <laughs> so uh, it's a great term I love that uh, so uh, so it was it was really um, it was great to be back with people and learning and um, I, I had a couple of great conference um, breakouts one was about um, you know uh, board and and town manager town assistants relations and how different communities work with each other. I thought that was really fascinating. And um, in a lot of communities, um, you know, found it fascinating that the board of selectmen, or excuse me, the select board does not speak with department heads at all. Um, and so everything goes through a town manager. So there, there's just different ways towns are set up that really wouldn't function well in this community because of how small of a community we are and how closely we all work together. But I did take away from it the importance of chain of command and making sure that all of our department heads understand that Casey runs the show and that she is um, our guiding, guiding person in, in speaking for us and, and what, what we decide as a board to kind of um, uh, to, to run the town because we can't all be here. She is tasked with kind of making sure the whole process comes together and works hard. And when we come and speak with a department head, it sometimes oversteps, um, you know, the general plan we all have agreed on going on that and the department head or employee doesn't really understand, like, is this coming from my boss or is it not my boss or so, but we, we work things a little differently because we're a smaller town. There were 
many months we, we were the only ones here we didn't have a town administrator so there and we're, we don't have a town manager form of government so um luckily we all love this community and work really hard to uh support our staff and we're not ones to get in the way and um you can get really difficult personalities in any kind of jobs you do but can be really wreak havoc in different communities um if you are you know, causing friction and not really working as a board. We work very closely together. And I think we, we kind of all have the same vision in mind of supporting our staff and um, and and making sure that um, people understand that we we love things to go through a chain of command, but are also here to help and support people as best we can. That was a pretty fascinating, interesting to see how different towns do it. Um, I'll stop there. And Tim, it was your first conference and you oh, yeah, well, what you thought of it. I am obviously, um, there's a lot to learn um, in this role. And fortunately, we have two other very experienced people. But um, my big takeaways from my first con uh, conference were senators, both Senator Markey and Senator Warren are encouraging us to um, try to take advantage of all the grant opportunities for um, the new program, the Inflation Reduction Act, which has billions of dollars for various things like climate resiliency, et cetera. So I, um, and the other thing that we learned is that they've given us some flexibility using ARPA funds, and now we can use them to um, hire a grant writer. Yes. So I think those two pieces of information indicate that we should decide to use some of our ARPA money to um, seek grants, and we should put together a group in the next week or so to identify all the projects that we're working on, including the prospective projects of new sewers and municipal buildings, because a lot of this money can be spent on uh, water treatment and uh, municipal buildings. And um, I, based on the MMA conference, I wrote a letter uh, from the board to Jim McGovern, who's volunteered to help us seek federal dollars for our campus project and for other projects in town. So I think if we can pull together a list of eight or 10 projects and then uh, coordinate with Joe Comerford, Natalie Blay, Jim McGovern and the senators and say which programs, uh, which grants should we be seeking to benefit us most in these areas, I think you could, and then pay for our grant writer with ARPA money. I Great think it's idea. a win idea. Great <laughs> so idea Tim. That's, that's what I took away from it other than chance to meet other people who are facing the same challenge as we are and listening to their ideas. And our Western Mass Conference, you know, tagging on to that is exactly that, looking at um, how do we partner together to get some of this funding? What are those funding streams? And I know that um, the planning agencies, FERCOG, Berkshire Planning, and um, the central one is Pioneer one, was um, they did a 10-part series of how to get state money. They're going to do a 10-part series how to get federal money. So, and I think that the, the goal that they, the thing that came out of their conferences were, and, and, and trainings where they need to do it over and over and over and over again because it really is a lot to absorb there's so many avenues but um so we're going to work really hard to to use that i think arpa money to to get more money and that and that was definitely their their message so great great takeaway um How about you well you did all the good work too well we <laughs> we did our we checked off everything in our list yeah. which was pretty darn exciting um the obviously the governor's budget isn't out yet so we can't formally apply for the waiver, but I did meet with Sean Cronin, who's head of the um, Department of Local Services, and um, Lisa, who is the one that has helped us. And they um, were very supportive of our waiver for our foundation educational grant. And um, so Casey is going to start the process. Casey and Chris are going to start the process and do all the work so that as soon as the budget is coming out in February sometime, estimating we can get our waiver in and we'll keep in touch with her. And she's going to help us walk through to Mindy, who is the one that actually grants us our waiver. So that's 400,000 plus in the bank, hopefully. Um, so that's really, really exciting. Um, and that helps us with our 01342 zip code. And we're also gonna have the post office give us all the Waitley addresses that are in our 01373 ad, ad, um, zip code that we can delete off and they will manually remove the income and, and then we'll mm -hmm. go through the foundation formula. So that's excellent. I, I think what was exciting again for 
us because all three of us were there. Um, at the end end of the closing ceremony, we had excellent speakers again from the uh, League of Cities and Towns, and um, it was Clarence Anthony and Mark Ott, and they were both awesome. really excellent speakers as to why we want to do things and you know how you make make attempts to make sustainable and commit to long term structural change and i and if you're going to really make cultural impact and i i get really excited and energized because it was the first speaker that we saw you know 2020 2020 same thing you want real change and you want real cultural change you have to make a commitment to look at everything through the lens that we do is this can we do something a little bit better mm -hmm. and Great. i i feel like we are all committed to that mm -hmm. And, and we were all energized by that talk and that we can look at everything we do from those lens mm -hmm. and, and make even itty bitty changes will make a difference. And, and that is cumulative. And that has been my big thing from, yeah. right from the beginning. Mark, is, I feel it was really important. Mark Ott was, was great. He, he was a town manager for the city of Austin, Texas. And um, he had done it for many years and it was... Um, just powerful when he first started that job. Um, you know, he was at a two or three meetings in and he was at a council meeting and and they were talking about, you know, how they di divided their town. Now, Austin's a pretty liberal town, right? The city, but, um, you know, the way they looked at structuring where um, persons of color lived was east of the tracks. It was like, it was specifically designed in governmental policy. And it was, um, it you know, he was like, he turned to the mayor, like, is he right? Is it, it, you couldn't believe like that that took place. And he said, mayor's like, unfortunately, we have a lot of work to do. And over the years, he's been doing that work and, and allowing towns and cities to recognize what's in their bylaw. And it isn't always about, race uh and persons of color it's it's what are you doing um as far as ada uh you know han if you're handicapped or if you're um or how are your pos uh, policies affecting um women uh there's so many different entities it's not only about race it's about all the ways that you look at your policies and are they addressing and making sure that you're bringing equity to um and and diversity to to job opportunities, to anything you do as far as zoning. And I know the planning board wants to work on some zoning stuff too. So we just have work to do. And it's um, it's fascinating, exciting to kind of see what we can do to make I, change. I think the only thing I was really disappointed, I was happy because we had a couple communities come to our Western Mass little pre-meeting at mm -hmm. 7.30 in the morning. So it was a huge commitment on people to come Saturday morning so early. Yeah. And they were rural, also rural communities, but not in Western Mass. And so mm -hmm. that was really positive. Yep. What was a little disappointing is that Amherst was right there with us on multiple conversations, but there wasn't a lot of outreach for other group you know the other library mm -hmm. communities that were right. are in our group yeah so tim has written another letter thank you and which i thank you so much but i think um if it's all right with you as a board i'm I'm going to follow up mm -hmm. with you know like swansea and yeah i you made some connections with fitchburg i did make some connections with fitchburg <laughs> yes i but did there were some other ones that we really you know they're missing in action and i yep. I, I feel like like westboro and weston we need to reach out to them and find out yeah. what the heck are they doing? Yeah. You know? Well, yeah. You know, and just to follow on to that, I did make uh, two visits to the uh, mass uh, board of uh, library commissioners booth um, on both Friday and Saturday to talk about, um, you know, some of the upcoming legislation to verify that the current budget documents have 25 million in them, but that's just the standard every year bonding that the MDLC normally has to provide funding to, communities are looking to improve their libraries. Um, I do attend weekly meetings um, that are facilitated by our librarian, uh, Candace uh, Bradbury Carlin, um, with the other 11 communities. So they're all doing things individually. 
and um, they're also talking to their local representatives. And the advice from Senator, Senator Comerford has been that we need to just be advocating together with our local um, legislators and realize that our local legislature, le legislators are advocating for us mm -hmm. as a group for these 12 communities. Um, we did try to meet with the um, House Ways and Means uh, and uh, both and the Senate Ways and Means committees, but uh, it being the beginning of the session, that was impossible. Yeah. Um, but uh, we know that uh, the House and the Senate, Senate Senator Tarr in particular, are working on the issue of getting us more money. And I was advocating, you know, it'd be nice if we could just get made back to the percentage of money that we uh, we we were going to receive. So we were going to be receiving 55% approximately of uh, the money to, to do our $8 million library project. It'd be nice to get 55% of what's now projected to be $12 million, um, which would give us a couple more million dollars. Yeah. So it's work and um, you just have to keep talking and yeah. pushing. Do you? I tried to look it up today, but I couldn't, I, I didn't have enough time between meetings, but um, did did anyone see? Because the filing deadline was Friday, so it was. Do you know what Senator Tarr actually filed for dollar amounts on that? No, I, I I don't. I think bills and budget are different. Yeah, they're not. So he didn't attach any money to the. As far as I know, as far uh, as I know, you know, these bills come out, and then you know, if there is money attached, no language, no no language was was given to me about. Um, it's like, I don't know if there are money attached to all of these things right. either. So I hope we have a, a few minutes to talk about yeah. these because I went through the list. And I'm mm -hmm. actually a little disappointed because it, yeah. it doesn't seem like there's a lot for us. And here. one final thing I wanted to say is that it's very clear that the new governor and lieutenant governor are focused on uh, mm -hmm. diversity, equity, inclusion. And so this adds impetus to us to support the efforts that we've been undertaking for the last few months to have a committee to help us with these kinds of issues because we are all very busy. Mm -hmm. We have so many things on our plate that it's good to have other people who are caring about a specific area of, of mm -hmm. you know local governance to to help us with this stuff. So I, I'm glad that we did uh, get the ad hoc committee underway, and mm -hmm. um, we're going to be seeing a lot more of even grants um, require you to consider all of the communities within your community and how are you helping with how are these projects going to help these individual communities to become more of one community? So it's a great thing. Yep, for sure. We have more data, I think, because of the COVID, I have to say, um, and our you know, involvement in response to COVID. So there is a lot more information than we would normally have, I think. So I'm just going to hit, while we're talking about uh, select board things, a lighthearted loop. Uh, yep. Light up your light up your light up uh my heart luminary night uh sponsored by the Deerfield Recreational Department. Um we have uh special people in our lives that make us happy, uh be it family or friends that make us smile in good times or bad. Let's celebrate those we love and show our community spirit by lighting up our walkways and driveways with luminaries on mm -hmm. Valentine's Day. So uh February 14th, uh, which is a Tuesday from 6 p.m. to Whenever they go out, um, fill heart cut out bags uh, or milk jugs with sand and uh, votive lights in place along driveways and walkways. Decorate your door and or yard with hearts and red lights. Uh, drive around town and toot your horn to support all those who have uh, decorated. Heart cut out uh, bags and votive candles are available from the recreational department. There's 10 bags and 10 tea lights for $10. Uh, to order bags and arrange pickup, contact Sue Antonellis, um, which is a rec department or R-E-C-D-E-P. Uh, t at town.deerfield.ma.us or you can call 413-665-1400 extension 107 to get a hold of sue and do that so that'll be fun again this year it always looks pretty every year when she does that and everybody else participates so i just want to hit on that really quick um any other select board things you want to hit on before you get to board health stuff i know we oh well, we'll get I, to the I was going to do bills. under um not anticipated we had that um Sarah has um, sent us about the safety of oh South Main Street. I yes, just wanted I, to address that. Yeah, but I, we could do that at the end of the meeting. Under, okay, I saw not anticipated. Kevin replied 
Kevin actually replied, Carolyn, and I was trying to write her an email a little bit earlier. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Because I didn't see, I, I, I couldn't get into my, couldn't get into my town email yesterday or today. Oh, so okay. I didn't know what people yeah, had sent. Yeah. He, he jumped on it. He, he listed all the things that he was going to do to address it. Right. Okay. So, um, this is somebody had a, a, an issue about, um, uh, the sidewalks when the snow is there and in front of the, um, kind of the Polish club and where it kind of leads to wolfies and stuff. And it, it's kind of, it gets kind of crowded where when the snow builds up and people are parking. And so we're going to do a better job of trying to keep that clear. And Kevin kind of addressed what he can do to do that. And, so. and then the other thing, uh, Denise and I had gone to the elected women's elected official luncheon. So we had good success, you know, connecting with Kim Driscoll, the Lieutenant governor, but, we were not able to really connect with Roxanne Wiedegardner up in Greenfield, who's on the infrastructure subcommittee. And mm -hmm. so Denise and I wanted to make sure that we coordinated some kind of meeting with her and us as a board. So I didn't know. Now, what, what kind of in infrastructure were you talking Because I, I remember until like 45 minutes. I didn't yeah. even know what you were. I did, we were going to talk about um, uh, Eliza's watch with the money from the well, that's the op yeah, that's the opioid money. But I didn't know what it. else you were talking about about infrastructure. the infrastructure. She's on it. The governor's infrastructure subcommittee mm -hmm. that is looking at infrastructure needs in Western Mass. Okay, and I wanted to make sure that Roxanne is representing yeah our our viewpoint. Okay, in small towns. And so I didn't know if you, talk with her. I was just going to say, I, I think it would be really wonderful if we could meet together with her. Sure. Okay. I'll, I'll love we'll work on that. Then. I'd love to. I, I, I didn't know if you guys would be interested, but I, I feel like this is hugely important. Mm -hmm. It is. And, and if we could important. just dash up there for a few minutes with her, she might be as yeah. a whole board versus just Denise right. and I, I think have more have more effect okay and we can talk about the, the the only other thing that i wanted to bring up we can bring it up under board of health or do this just now is that um green well, greenfield um is a court it's based the opioid settlements are based on number of prescriptions written for some reason oh is that what it was i was yes. trying to figure it out we 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 have we're number three so in franklin county in Franklin County, yeah. right. So Greenfield gets um, about a million, about a million over the period of time, and and we get like 183. Anyway, if you add up all the towns in our little collaborative, it's about 120 thousand a year. Mm -hmm. And so what we're trying to do is come up with some things that we could do collaboratively in our group that would leverage. We could use some of the staff from our public health grants and our money that would really produce something so right. i just want to make watch. sure right i just want to make sure you guys were on board with us working collaboratively there's nothing formal we're just starting the process yeah but, i know that um like a task force a lot of people yeah. were working on um you know making sure that all their police had narcan like the, that kind of funding oh, for do. that kind of stuff yes. and i think that we'll I, you know i'll reach out to to um to that man that's doing the Eliza's watch. Eliza, 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 Eliza's oh. watch and just see where he's I keep saying process. Emily's watch and then um Eliza's I'll just see how far he's come along and and I talked to Linda Dunleavy about it too and she was excited to try and get something going and I, I did talk with um Roxanne the mayor in Greenfield about it a little bit too so good good because I, I I feel like it, it, you know if Shrewsbury and Lever get money um a little you know like seven thousand a year yeah and and uh, montague is is like four or something you think what are we more? getting like 38 i know we're getting like 38 right okay a year we're, no we're getting like 62 oh wow so it's uh how many years is this over it's like it's like 2038 it? yeah it's, like it's, it's, there's going to be additional settlements so right. it will be apportioned pretty much the same. But the I but all of us that are in our little collaborative actually have, you know, we have some money. 
Mm -hmm. And you add it together with Greenfield. Right. It, it's a huge amount. So Do we still need to go through like the stabilization or any of that kind no, of No, we have to set up uh we have to set up a, an account that the money goes into so that it can be roll over. And that's a town. So Brenda, so Brenda can roll it over. I have all the details. Um, but the idea is that the money comes in, and if you get additional settlement money, the money goes into that account. Yeah. And we it doesn't have to be spent every year. Correct. We can just roll. Yeah, over. build up and then see right. what we can do. And I'd love but its the only leverage. purpose is for prevention and you know of opioids. You can, yeah, it's that. pretty broad. You can you like you can use it for quite a bit. You could back, you could backfill police. You could do all kinds of you different stuff. You can do training, it, training. Yeah. But you can do all kinds I do of stuff. Think, but I, um, I want to make sure we do something effective. Right. Yes, yeah. I would like to get. Um, I would like to leverage some state money. I mean, really, and federal money to to. It'd be yeah. great to get that thing off the ground, but well, we'll Attorney General's that. office is sending stuff over to towns. Right. I sent ideas. I sent that whole case. <laughs> hey, Casey. So I just want to let everybody know there's certain um, financial functions that have to happen before these monies can be used. Right. We're right. actually yeah. waiting for the legislature to give us some clarification right. because presently I think we can only create a stabilization account. Fine. Um, so we're <laughs> waiting to hear more information. I just want to make sure that you have that piece of information. I have, yeah, I have all the the kind of things that you have to do. Yeah. Um, and the and uh, Mass Health Officers Association, Cheryl Sabara, has written the warrant articles already. Oh, good. And she's already and Perfect. she's and we can ask her for any for any template. legal fees associated to this is also part covered. of covered of this and she's willing to volunteer to come out and talk to us or you know go on yeah. zoom and talk to us so that if we have any questions so that there's no we don't incur expenses setting this up i mean well, i think we have to go to town meeting so some right. yes we have to go we have to have a warrant article on this town meeting yes but so i have enough to do that but we can have cheryl we can use cheryl's model and then just have our council review it I think it's going to be pretty standard across the state. That's exactly what it's going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, moving on, uh, Board of Health, do you want to hit on anything before we get into budgets and stuff? Well, um, Alex has um, part of the renewal process. Um, you can see how our renewals, the number of renewals we had this year. I had that in his report. Health agent reports all his session. um the permits uh when he sent out the letter yeah he um wanted to know if people are interested we have enough people interested in yes. serve safe so he's going to set up a class um in february the end of february and it will we don't do you have a number yet at yes the cost? So, yeah so i have about so the cost for you know uh, uh through uh serve safe which is one of the you know premier uh, food safety um, vendors, um, also one of the most cost effective because it's just rampant, you know, nationally. It's actually $117 for a bundle for students. Uh, that includes the $36 for a paper exam and the uh, the test book. And then um, anything for um, the instructor, um, that fee is scheduled at the um, instructor's discretion. So well, what we would do is just cover our costs. So you right. would just round it up. So if it's a it's a food protection manager one. That's a two day event, and that usually, um, you know, that's about eight hours um, a day. Or you could do the food safety one as well, and that one is about um, two hours. Um, so it, it's just one of those things where it looks like the needs are really big uh, right now, just from the output that we the input that we received. Um, so I guess the question is, you know, what would the fee amount be? Um, so in order to cover you just that? want to cover our costs. Can so. we, so what, what, um, are we setting up a class? Is that what we're well, doing? no, Alex will set it up. But what? He, he, he can set class up. And, uh, and what who are you doing it for? So it's we're for, doing uh, it for, uh, Wolfie's, um, Subway, the walk, uh, Gianni's, Richardson's. They all um, need it. Is they all want it. Yes. They all, yes. Yep. Because I sent out uh, friendly reminders 
of uh, you know deadlines for you know uh, submittals for temporary food events and whatnot. And then underneath, I put in um, because there was a, an issue with getting all the certificates. Um, apparently, there's a big issue with getting the the courses, and you know people thought the MGM was going to be doing it, uh, but it seems like it's really hard to find a course. I know um, FERCOG just did a bunch of them as well. Uh, they that was over the summer, right? Right, right. And so, okay, so there's so a need, and we're going to do it. Yeah, do and the, Alex the is going to set hours. it up in the in the winter time, you know, at the end of February, and it, probably like a Monday and a Tuesday, so that um, you know when it's slow for restaurants. And where are we going to do it here? Um, well, we've done it in the past over at the 1888 building, no. so we're going to have to do it here. Right. So it will oh. have to be a night that. Um, end of February will work because we. I don't think there's any meetings scheduled yeah. in this room, like on the 27th and 28th. So I have potentially about 16 people who want to take that course. And and if need be, um, we can maybe divide it up to, you know, two sessions um, if a space is an issue or anything like and, that too. And so. this is to get them uh, their certified per the food code and state code. So, yeah. And you, and, uh, and how much does it cost to to get to do the course? So it would be at no cost to the town unless, but there's a cost to the individuals for like their bundles, uh, for, for like the their kits? books. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And how much are the kits? You said we're like 117. 117 bucks. for a bundle. Yeah, for each student. Okay, yeah. so that's so not that's not anything that we have to buy. That's their own yeah. um, purchase. Um, and so I guess the question I have is, um, what is a reasonable amount in order to cover the cost for that? Um, you know, you just to add it up, Alex, and then it would, well, if it's 120 bucks to, for the kit, right. right. And then we, I just want to be every... equitable if it's, if it's for our own, you know, businesses, I just don't want to, you know, go ahead and. Yeah, no, we're not gouging costs. our people. The whole no, point was, is to get compliance. Right. And get so 120 right. bucks, right? A piece. Yeah. 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 Okay. So whatever. Yeah. I mean, as long as that covers or if there's any other yeah. items, if it's 125 yeah. just, bucks. Just or cover whatever. our costs. So yeah. is that um, something where I just put that in for like um, a proposal for the fee, updating the fee schedule in order to include that? Updated. There's no, there's no fee schedule. You're just going to. Well, there is. There is a board of health fee schedule. A board of health what? There's a board of health fee schedule. There is, but this is not part of a fee schedule, Alex. Right. Okay. This is your my experience. These classes have been held intermittently. Well, I'm just asking what the process community. is. That's all. Because yeah. I, I just don't want to, you know, say, oh, it's this amount, but I don't have anything in order to, you know, show that. That's all I'm just asking. It's yeah. Just so just things. to clarify, um, there is a fee for um, the the bundles that provide information to each individual participant. It's a book. Yeah, yep. yeah it's yes. a book. said 117 or 120. Yes. And then there's the hours that you are going, are you going to be teaching the class? Yep. I'm a certified instructor. Right. Instructor. So yep. There's, a, if yeah. it's an eight hour session and then there's a four or two hour session, um, does it make sense to cover for the town to, to that, in addition to his work, yeah. charge an hourly rate fee? It, or, that was why we determined. Is, we, that's why we determined the interest. We just didn't open a class. Well, but. my question is: my question is: is it per student? Is it per class session? Like, how is the fee? I would assess. It's that's, per student. Per student. Per student. Okay. Yeah. Because yes. you're going to give each one a if, bundle. If 125, right. you got 16 people, and it's 125. Okay. Times those 16 people, that will cover your hours because you're thirty dollars an hour. Okay. okay. No, I was just saying for thirty-eight, whatever. Okay. So if you have sixteen people and you're collecting five dollars right. to offset your your cost, that should cover our costs. No, you quite. just want to make sure you're covering our costs. You know, so so if it's eight hours at twenty-five, okay, so that's two hundred dollars. Right. You can't. And then it's it. ten hours at twenty-five. That's fifty dollars. Exactly. So he needs to get two hundred and fifty dollars for his hours plus. So you divide that by 16 and you come up with the numbers. What right. Right. So, right. So what I'm asking is if there's another class, let's say like another session needs to happen. And let's say we don't get 16 people. Right. That's why I'm asking what the. That, that's why I wanted you to determine the interest. That's why I wanted you to determine the commitment. Okay. So that well, you don't, got about it, it doesn't cost us money. Right. Okay. All right. I mean, was it, I would say 150 bucks would cover it, right? Okay. 
Yeah, he enough? can look at the numbers closely yeah, yeah. and then and see how many. I can just send it. I can just send it to you. Yeah, guys. I mean, bottom yeah. line is if you have to do this twice, right? Because ten people can do it one night and six people can do it another night, right? right. Then it's going to be the same number of hours, but it's just going to yeah. be less efficient exactly. unless all of them come yeah. to the same session. And That's so, why you don't uh, want to offer too many right. choices. Yeah. You right. basically want to say the eight-hour sessions on this day and the two-hour sessions on this day, right. and Otherwise, you're going to have to travel to wherever you're going Somewhere to travel else, to get yeah. food safe certified. This, and right. we're just covering our costs. We're not right. trying to make money. Yeah. Right. And, do and we're doing it in the wintertime when it's slow on a Monday and Tuesday when most people are closed. Right. right. You know, you do this kind and of you thing. You do it during like a, a, a spring break or kind of thing, you know. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Like February break. So. Okay. All right. I'll do that, that sounds good. And then I received a, uh, you know, request for comments from the Board of Health about the proposed marijuana establishment. Um at the zero Greenfield Road, sunny days. I have the Did information. That? I have the information here, but is there anything from the Board of Health? Yeah, I want to look at that for okay. sure. I mean, eventually, I mean, not. Yeah, you can, minute, Alex, but, you can just leave it. We're not going to yeah. do it today. Yeah, but we'll look through that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Um, and then. Um, just want to make a few other um, comments about the uh, inspection numbers. Is there anything in particular that you guys would like in the reports um, for going forward? Um, I have just sort of like a narrative piece of what I've done activities wise and including the the fee um, and the uh, the permits. Um, for that well, this is, this is just the permit renewals. I'd like to see you Put oh, no, down the, Carolyn, the, this the is, inspections. So yeah, I I already have that included, Carolyn, and it's for the Dunkin' Donuts routine food inspection. The narrative up top. I know, but I would like to oh. see it in the chart. It's easier to absorb. Oh, yeah. So you want to have the the inspections, right? Just like yeah, Valerie right. did for her no, Richmond. What Valerie report. did was looking at the permits. So when she did disposable constructions permit, if she did total five. Um, that was on there, but nothing about food. Right. So that's why I was just asking. Yep. No, I want the same kind of thing that gives fee collected, you know, that you did the inspection when you did the inspection and there was any comments like, well, you know, you don't need to, because it's a public record, you don't need to put a lot in, but it would be, you know, necessary to go back for reinspection. Just say, you know, reinspection scheduled yep. for two weeks. That would indicate to me that there was a, a problem with the inspection, and that's all I need to know. Okay. Tim, Trevor, anything for the that report? Um. All right. So I'll do that. Um, I finally got the numbers from Curative about how many tests that we did at the Deerfield site, mm -hmm. and we did uh, over 3,947 tests. Okay. And um, when they started in March, all the way ended until... Um, was it December 26th of last yeah. year? So yeah, about then. Yep. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, I've been getting requests from uh, food vendors about doing a seasonal temporary food event um, and uh, from the food trucks as well um, in regards to the also doing the, the temporary um, food of event uh, fee of $35. So their question is, um, would the annual also cover that instead of having to do the, the temporary food event as well? No. And the reason why we've been over this before over and over again, you do the, the main inspection when they come here to the town hall, we want to make sure they have all the facilities for heating, cooling, sanitation, but then you do an on, and that's once a year, it's not a big deal. And then when they are at the location, it's critical that we do an on-site, which is very cheap. If they're making three or four thousand dollars in an event, a thirty-five dollar permit is not a hassle. Okay. And then we go and we see: Are they cooling? Are they heating? Are they using sanitation properly? Is it really working? Because through the course of the year, these people do not pay um, real estate tax. They don't pay meals tax, and there's no oversight. And they go from site to site and they can change staff. We have no control over it. That's why 
on, I don't want, do not want to give up the on-site. The reason why the FERCOG does an annual is because the cost to them for Randy Crozier to go up to Roe or go up to Charlemont it, from wherever he's at in Greenfield or Gill is extremely expensive. This is within our own town and doing on-site inspections for every food truck is critical in my mind if we're gonna not have you know, food and food borne illness in investigations. It pays for itself. Just the hassle. I realize it's a hassle to go to every food truck, but I, I don't want to give that up. It's, oh, I've had 20 oh, years of experience it. on this, and I, I, you can't talk me out of the worth of an on site. Well, I just inspection. got requests, so I'm just bringing it up to the board. To I know, but so. we keep having these requests because. They don't want us to do an on-site inspection, and it's it's too bad. They're going to do it. Well, we're going to do it. And I have a question about uh, uh, not not citing any specific incident, but um, when a food truck um, doesn't want to comply with an inspection, I mean, I, I assume these inspections are, are random, and it doesn't matter whether you start at the beginning of the event, the middle That's of the correct. event, or the end right. of the event. It is you, random. You're supposed, to, you're supposed to do it actually, you know, during the event in order to see the operations of it, yes. Right, so um, is there a, is there a plan or a policy in place to, for non-cooperation? Yes, and it's... Do we uh, call the police? Do we... Well, it's it's in the, uh, at the state level as well with the merge um, food code. A 2013, you know, 105 CMR 590, and also in the food code, and it, it says that if you deny access to someone, then you know the board of health has that right to, um, you know, uh, revoke, suspend, um, or have a hearing in front of the board if there is a denied um, access to uh, an inspection um, at the time. So what if there's a disagreement during an inspection, and um, you know they they don't allow you to complete your work? Oh, I, I'm not going to, you know, have any competition. I just say, okay. And I just report it to the board. And, um, you know, it's at the, the board's discretion with um, what the force. You can is. close them up. You can close them up. Yeah. Or they'll never get I mean, obviously, I don't want, I don't want the, you know, tensions to escalate into a situation where somebody who's got a, you know, open carry permit suddenly decides to go crazy. I mean, I just wanted to right. know what's the process. Well, the thing is, say say you go to do the on-site inspection, why it's so important, because people's sanitation, the water might not work, the sink isn't working, so they're not properly cleaning between you know, customers, right. then then you can you know tell them that this is an issue. Yeah. Obviously, Alex will try to... And that is a violation, right? Yeah, violation, you write it up. Yeah. Um, if it's very serious, then you would try to shut them down. I mean, if it's if if, right. if, if people are going to get sick from it, I mean, what you're looking for is compliance. Right. You're not going to shut them down because, you know, a minor. Thing. Right. But if it's a serious foodborne illness issue, where say you had potato salad that was out in the sun all day, not being properly. If it's not at temperature, right? Right. No. Then, then that is. I mean, people could really get sick. So yeah. that's why you do the food inspection to make sure they're actually. Yeah. I've only had to do that one. Properly. I've only had to do that one time where I asked the food to be discarded um, at site, and uh, it was just way out of range of temperature. Mm -hmm. And and the and the operator was very respectful of that. Um, but any other incidents like that, that you know, going south, I, I just you they just know well, food yeah. trucks know that in the town of Deerfield does our inspections. We do the inspections. Yeah, and so. And we do joint inspections with the fire department as well for the pre-operational inspections, which has been going well. And we're starting to do that as well with uh, Chief Darren um, Milnick um, yeah. for the Deerfield events. Um, and Kurt and I do the South uh, Deerfield events. So, um, I think if you have a um, an issue where someone gets heated, you take all the data yep. that you have and you come back and then... They yeah. just don't operate in Deerfield again. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah it's up but, to the board. Yeah. yeah, I just wanted to show support that. Uh, For sure. As long as everybody's being, once once the uh, once the food vendor yeah. becomes uncivil, then we just disengage and absolutely and, right. Uh, no you know, follow a different path. Yep. Right. Yeah. I think because no they know that we do the inspection, we don't really have any issues. They tend to be on and the, that's on the mark. Yeah. yeah, because they know that 
someone's going to show up. Yeah. Yep. So I have the also the uh, COVID-19 wastewater surveillance data that I just received. I think yep. we all received it from the yeah, biobot. In our email. Yep. And um, I did follow up with um, Eric Meals from the you know wastewater treatment facility um, who does our collections. And I just, you know, um, had a discussion with, um, you know, what's occurring over there and why are the numbers um, a little bit out of place. Um and if there's any additional help and it was interesting he told me with the vials there are three vials um collected throughout the day um and they're each one uh, they're each 50 mils and it's a very small sample size um and i think a really interesting question is what's the standard procedure what's the sops with biobot because that kind of sampling size is very small compared to you know the you know the solid waste the um, stuff that he puts in for everybody else exactly which is 500 mils to one mil i mean uh 100 um yeah i'm sorry one liter um and so i'm just trying to wrap my head around what the data here means from an epidemiological standpoint um but i just i did want to follow up with, with you guys the last meeting we talked about you know, why aren't the samples being collected uh, for a number of weeks? Um, so I just wanted to report that back. Okay. Um, anything you want me to follow up on there? No, no I'm just disappointed we had no data for since December. So yeah. when we had all the surges happening. But. Is it possible that, um, that BioBot, although they want a, a very small sample, that what you do is you collect you know, the influent. three three large volume from influent three different times in a day. I don't know if you mix them together, you do them, you know, you, so there's a large enough volume and you swirl it all around so that it's concentrated and, and take the small sample. Right. If that's different than just taking the tiny sample, because I think that's what bio dot biobot does, and they do the dilution part. Mm -hmm. And we just collect the raw. But it's a small raw sample, right? That's right, yeah. Yeah, so that's why I was wondering if Biobot has additional information about yes. taking, and you know. I did request that, but I haven't received anything okay. yet. Um, we'll maybe we can get someone from Greenfield to come down because Greenfield has been online the entire time. So I don't know. Okay. understand and then what our problem is. I had a, um, just questions about uh, copies of the Board of Health regulations. I've been trying to place them um only ones i can retrieve is the the tobacco and the um body art regulations but i'm just wondering um anywhere where we can obtain that because i did um reach out to the town uh, clerk and just trying to go ahead and um, i know you find you would, that you would ask me about that this week and uh i was stuck at my day job so um it's okay. Now that I'm here tonight, I'll look and see if I have anything. I know we adopted all of that stuff recently, so right. it should be in my info. So I just need to take a look and see. What, I, I didn't understand where that was all coming from and what the urgency was on it. It just seemed like, well, like it was getting like really frantic about finding it. And I just needed some time to go. Well, it's just important that we have that because yeah, but, Treehouse came in and they're uh, talking about uh, porta potties. Um, yep. And um, Bob and I were trying to see if there was anything um, on that, and we couldn't find anything. Right. Um, and so that's that's where that development occurred, and that's why I reached out to you know Casey and you know. Traditionally, right. we I mean, have only um, licensed porta potties as an individual events. As what? As in individual events, we look at each request for a porta potty yeah. and decide whether we're going to do it or not because we have not been supportive of porta potties in the past. Okay. So if it's a one, a truly a one off event or it's a charitable doing, you know, a charitable event like the, you know, uh, bicycle ride that Franklin Land Trust does or something yeah. like that, that's a one time thing, then, then it's usually okay. Yeah, well, I just haven't seen any of those permits or licenses or any of that progress. That's why I, I, I asked for the regulations in order to just clarify that. Usually the Board of Health decides. Right. The requests. Um, and then 
we did receive more COVID-19 antigen, um, you know, the eye health tests from the state. We did get more. And for the schools. Because they know we're running out, right? Yes. And so we've been, um, you know, replenishing that as we go. It's just, it's going like hotcakes, you know? Right. I'm glad people are using them. Oh, I know. Well, I just dropped off um, for the month, um, you know, um, the mask and uh, the COVID test to the schools um, to... Um, for the elementary into the frontier um so mary ellen sloan our public health nurse has also has them and she will deliver them for people if they do want them yeah okay individually and then um just being on the on the dph webinar calls um in regards to the phe grant uh well no i'll talk about the we got uh, re-enrolled or our renewal for enrollment for the vaccine management was successful with uh, DPH. Um, our color training and MIIS is up to date. Um, talked with Dr. Benson, so everything is good. Um, wanted to go ahead and provide some stats that the state shared with me. Um, for last year, uh, for 2020, uh, there was over 1,603,000 thousand seven i'm sorry uh zero um 76 covid shots in the state which is amazing uh done by local boards of health and via vendors and also um one hundred twelve thousand eight hundred and six flu shots uh, done by local boards of health via vendors and uh, the the uh, Deerfield Board of Health, uh, through our vendors, we had 533 shots for flu, Good. and we did over 1,270 COVID shots for last year. Um, so those are pretty amazing numbers for a really small uh, Board of Health. Um, but, you know, if the need is there, uh, we will certainly try to help um, as best as we can. And um, that's pretty much um that i got i don't know if there's anything else that you want me to follow up on or um i don't think so we want to talk about these budgets now or oh yeah yeah i have that too yep we can um i know on the board of health expense we have we still have money left over from nature right that can be used for supplies um, well, it's got to be for emergency preparedness and for uh, training, technical training for workforce de uh, development. Uh, yep. Casey, um, how much would you recommend for supplies? We haven't had, I mean, we, we don't generally use that much. I would say, I think before it was 2,500, um, I would say probably... 1500 to 2000 it depends on whether you're going to have expense well we never know what expenses can be if they're unanticipated so yeah and, but, that, and we but have for emergency if, too. They, if they're emergency then it's if they're an emergency we deal with it but general expenses can include um supplies inspections for, and nursing for inspections and stuff yeah. Uh, log books well Sorry. why don't we put a thousand dollars in because for if it's emergency right yeah yeah i mean if we've got a nurse now and yeah right it's important that she have what she needs absolutely yeah, yeah. um but again emergency, emergency stuff would be covered already so right so, um, i would just put a thousand dollars in i would keep everything else the same so, so for office and inspectional supplies we put in nursing supplies we put one thousand Mm -hmm. Okay. Right under supplies on board of health expense, second yep. line down. Yep. Yeah. I, that's the only thing I'd add and the only thing I would Are we change. still um, oh. doing tech, tech testing at the UMass? Yeah, yep, we are. Taking advantage of it? Is that enough or too much or what? I'd like to increase it, but I, you know. It, but I don't know if anyone's using it. Is anyone well, using it, Carolyn? we get our data every no, year. No, I know, but have you heard of anybody? I have. Oh, yeah. oh you have? Oh, yeah. well, just want to make sure. Um, I've sent in two ticks myself. So, Carolyn, how much? Us all the money. <laughs> yeah. So, Carolyn, how much more would you like, though? It's if, not. It's not. If it's I would getting covered. We're good. Yeah, I oh, would just keep covered. it. Okay. I would just keep it the same and see if 
if we run low, they Paul usually calls me, okay. and um, I can then uh, go to the finance committee for a reserve transfer because that, that's legitimate. Big choppers. Yeah. <laughs> And what's but, this uh, infect control? Uh, that's I, I BTI. Haven't... What's what? BTI. What is that? The BTI discs that you we throw out in the catch basins. The catch for, oh, for, for the mosquitoes. mosquitoes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. like the dunks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then. Uh, and how much is that? Six hundred. We're keeping yes. that. Okay. Yeah. And I would keep everything else the same. And and then I noticed your mosquito went up five hundred bucks. Is that? Um. Well, that was from last year. Uh, that oh. was la this. Oh, yeah. So we don't have any notes here. So we're moving this stuff oh. over. Okay. Yeah. So are we keeping keep the mosquito? 500. Okay. We actually um, didn't, as a mosquito control district, bill us more than 5,000. Okay. But we talked about it 5,500 last year, and it probably will be 5,500 this year coming forward. All right. Uh, animal inspect, 2,000? Yeah. We keep that? Okay. Uh, meetings, trainings, conferences, 2000. And the nurse doesn't get paid out of here, correct? No. Okay. That's right. Yeah. We move that Dues over to um, payroll. Yep. Okay. So that's that. Um, the Board of Health payroll. Uh, Casey, is the 250 for postage, is that enough for the Board of Health? I, it varies. Yeah. I would say 250 to start. If something happens, we'll have to deal with it later. Okay. Um, this is mostly for packaging up rabid stuff. You know, if you have a rabid animal test. So it looks like the Board of Health expenses um just go up a thousand has just gone up one thousand. Okay. So that's fourteen ninety-seven. Yeah. Okay. Fourteen thousand nine hundred and seventy-five. All right, seventy-five. All right. This is where the nurse is. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Does any of this get paid for by the grant? Um, we have to do the base amount and then and this is our base amount. This is our then base. Any uh we the the nurse is is additional hours is being um already covered. Marianne Sloan mm -hmm. is already covered and not in here. Um, under the first public health excellence grant, under the second public health excellence grants, we're getting additional nurse hours, and we're also getting and is uh, inspector Cindy? hours. We're getting for Cindy. We can ex we can get some additional for Cindy, um, but we also have a another person. How much additional do you know? The other person? No, that hasn't that hasn't been just. Um, it's it's roughly three hundred thousand divided by two. Two staff persons. Wow. Um, and That's the nice. overhead for Greenfield and the grant. Over how many years? Seven years, right? It's three hundred thousand for year. seven years. Seven hundred years. Each year, Each year, Each year three hundred. Yeah. Wow. For all those communities. Right. To get um, there, it's but... not oh, free. Right. I go to seven meetings. A month. Oh no! Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> so what is? Um, I'm just wondering: is there is there a way to? No, you can't not... cut. You can't cut. This is the, the base. base amount. No, I just I have a good where question we about because people will say, mm, "Where do we capture that we're using these hours? Like, show that we're getting all these other hours for nurses I, somewhere." I some, you know what I mean? That, for the yeah. finance committee. Well, so they, the thing about that Cindy chart. is that she's really focused on the people's the people skills and actually going to you know the senior centers and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And the other nurses, and Carolyn, correct me if I'm wrong, with the PHE grant, they're really focused on immunological disease and um Mary, the Mary, that's correct. Um okay. Cindy, Cindy handles um, you know, she goes to the senior center, she okay. sees people, she does home visits. She's also in charge of our emergency list, right? Homebound people. And then um Mary Allen does the Maven reporting on infectious disease. She follows up on mm -hmm. COVID, stuff like that. Right. This additional nurse would be able to supplement the hours could be Cindy's hours or Mary Ellen's hours or additional nursing person. And yeah. what I'm hoping, which I'm sure there are gonna be at least one more person, one more nurse hired that would float 
in our little collaborative between the town and yeah. maybe maybe assist with Cindy for like on Monday and Tuesday kind of thing. Maybe, so maybe, say right? there's a and 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 also like when we run our flu clinics, this right. is a big thing for me, Trevor. Is our vaccine management? We can run our own. You know, they would handle the flu vaccine. Right, because I've been doing because that. Because we had yeah. had several. Well, I know three. We've had three people that were billed for by our vendor, and then their the, insurance the, didn't cover it. Yeah, the insurance didn't cover it. The Medicare didn't cover it for some reason. So people were stuck with a hundred and twenty dollar bill. So the idea is that we would run our. She did clinics. follow up with two of them, and they're, they're it is resolved. Yeah. Okay, but the idea is that we would run our own clinics so that they would not and right. and and put in for our own reimbursement, so that if we have a handful of people that are not covered by insurance, we can still get them those shots mm -hmm. because we're making twenty five or fifty dollars per shot. Now, does that mean that we're doing like a revolving account yes. for that? Yes. But Greenfield would run the above. Okay, so Greenfield account. would do that because they're the lead agency with the with the grant. Right. Okay. So where it has um, five thousand dollars amount from NATO grant in 2023 that does not need to be in 2024 no that, that nature that, grant covered some of the um that covered some of the, um the additional hours for cindy mm -hmm. um and we did receive more of that so we did get the full thirty five thousand. um and right now uh we just have to go ahead and figure that out but that's not going to be included for 2024 that was closed out in december that's correct. Yeah, we still have the money to spend. I do have a question about. It looks like Dix here. Uh, our hourly rate is NA. What's up with that? Should that shouldn't that be at forty two? Um, it actually should be. We had this discussion. Brenda and I had this discussion. Um, it was brought up by another department head. The inspectors have not had an increase in their rates in several years. Um, so the suggestion that we had was to raise that to $42 an hour. Okay. Well, we need Across to make... support all the inspectors. Well, we need, we need Dick around. So he, you know, I just want to make sure that his hourly rate is consistent with the other inspectors. Just well, that would be an alternate rate um, for anybody that's covering in it, in that capacity. Right. Um, and it also is going to be on the building commissioner's budgets for his, for those inspectors that are utilized in that department. But Dick wouldn't be the alternate. He, he, he well, he'd be the backup yes. for the health agent, but he's the assistant board of health. He's the number two man, right? Regardless, that's okay. it. I think it's identified as alternate, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Well, yeah. it, it says it's always here. been treated that way. That was years. That was other years. Oh, okay. That was other years. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So if you're going to change it, I need to know so I can let Brenda know. Okay. Okay. Well, it should probably be all 42. Because, yes. Yeah. Um, Val is, you is can just... because of our past relationship with Valerie, she normally charges 50 to $75. Mm -hmm. but she's willing to work for us for 42. So yeah. her alternate should be 42 yeah absolutely because we already pay her 42 and we're going to in, in case you're going to say that all the other the plumbing inspector electric inspector they're all going up to 42 that's okay. actually i think, Bob I think and I we need to do that across the board and be okay. consistent yeah, it needs to be equitable okay and like i said they haven't received an increase in several years i yeah. know and right. we don't want to lose Right. We've got good you know, inspectors. We should make is, sure that they stay. Ten thousand dollars okay for the alternate inspector that's Dick's place now? Yes. Is that going to cover him for Monday, uh, Tuesday and Thursdays? Yes. That's enough. Okay. Right. That's enough. Okay. Okay. And then um quick question about Cindy's hours. Um we did have to dip a little bit into the NATO for additional hours, but we won't have that opportunity no. for um fy24 no but she'll be we can use her for additional hours under the public health grant okay so perfect she's Just fine. making sure thank you she's fine with those hours all right thank thank you we do um and then okay so that's i think that's everything right so yeah um did you guys receive i didn't i didn't receive the excel sheet yet on this um would it be possible we could get this sent and then I can forward it to Casey and Brenda. Well, Casey's going to 
Casey's forwarding it to Brenda already, right? Oh, Brenda already is. has this. Oh, okay. Brenda has this. She actually develops it. So the oh. notes that you have, um, we can make sure she has those. If you okay. give her the notes you have, that should be fine. All right. I'll okay. just shoot you an email, Casey. Thank you. Okay. All right. Sounds good. That's um, everything for me. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. So we have minutes. Uh, thank you. Let's hit those um, if we can. Has anyone had a chance to go through? Yes, I didn't. I didn't have any problems with. I didn't. I mean, I. I just uh, had two quick questions. Sure, please. Um, the first one. The uh, fifth. It says January fifth. That's two thousand twenty-three. Uh, yes. The second one, January fifth, two thousand twenty-three. Yeah, it should have been the eleventh. See up at the top, it says eleven. Yeah, that's yeah. got to be fixed. Thank you for pointing that out. Wait, and it also point? needs to say the year. Oh yeah, that's yeah. true. In in each one of these, right? Because yeah. if we're missing that, yeah. how are the other ones look? They have the year. The other ones have the, the other year. Ones have the year. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's fix that. January fifth, twenty twenty three. Mine has January. Mine has twenty twenty three. Where? I'm talking yes, about in pursuant to notice duly blah blah. Oh blah. oh yep. oh okay. Right yep. All right. I was looking okay. in the corner. Yep. That that has the date. Yeah, I'm, I'm just not sure why it's listed in two places. But yeah, since it's listed, I just want <laughs> get them to... right. No, that's fine. Okay, so um, sorry, I just don't understand. What motion for January fifth, twenty twenty three. I make that motion. And I'll second it. Thank you. Any further discussions? All those in favor? Uh, Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S, aye. Thank you. Entertain a motion for January 11th. I'll make that motion. Thank you. With the, with the, notated with, with the change in notation. Yes, to add to the, add the year 11th. in the body of the note yep. minutes. And, I'll, and correct the July, uh, January 11th. Correct. Yep. And I will second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S, aye. Great. Next is for December, December 10th, 2020. You know, make a motion on that. I mean, they look fine to me, so I'll make that motion. Okay, and, and uh, I'll second it. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey abstain. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S, aye. Thank you. Um, I'll make uh, a motion for December sixteenth, twenty twenty. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey abstain. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S, aye. Thank you. And then we have uh, make a motion for December 30th, 2020. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, abstain. Thank you. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S, aye. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, it's great to be caught up because. Yes, I'm <laughs> so grateful for everybody that's doing the minutes and. Just Thank super you, Alex and Chris. Alex and Chris, you're wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, see you, Alex. Bye. All right. And then uh, let's see. Okay. So, discussion items. We have Frontier Regional School Budget Amendment for approval and authorization. And this is uh, dated January 12th. And it's a letter uh, from the district, usually asking us, uh, from Darius Modesto, asking us to um, allow them to spend uh, some of their E&D instead of sending it back to the town is usually the case whenever they have larger amount. A lot of times it gets sent back unless they request to allow them, allow they, they send a request to us. We have to object. Otherwise, they just can go ahead and spend it. Um, I don't have any objection because I know they're using it for capital stuff. Um, I also would, um, so I'll make a motion to approve this because okay. I, I did talk to Darius and I, um, approve him trying to use this money towards capital yep and that's the uh replacement of the tennis courts and the boiler system other larger capital items and and our um so that's that so um you made a motion do we have a second i'll second any further discussion nope all, all um, in favor yep yeah, maybe next time i'd just be interested to talk to darius but uh, sure. Aside from that, I'm in favor. All right. Hi. Good. I, uh, I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Carolyn Ness. Great. Thank I, you so it's much. It's one of those things, Tim, that it's a, one of those. I don't want to say every year, but every, he tries to do as much as he can with his funds. Yeah. 
whatever's left over. Yep. I mean, um, he's very good. Yep. Uh, let's see. The uh, next item here was just a, the, a notice, I guess, for the borrowing. Um, the current ban amount is 930000 It's currently in repayment uh, for interest only at this time. So our share is $11,289.76. We have to prepare because pretty soon principal is going to be getting around. Um, but right now, it's just interest. These are for the other, you know, this is for the, the track and other, all the, the big six is really what, what was on the list. Um, just now, more like a big four. But so that's that. Um, I don't think. I think there's just more of a notice, right? I don't yeah. think anyone need to approve any of that stuff. Um, there is the uh, the next item is the Pocumtuck Valley Memorial Association's craft fair approvals. Um, and let's see. Oh, and he had sent us, uh, excuse me, Darius had sent us the, the um, language for the warrant yeah. article. Um, so the Old Deerfield Craft Fair Association. So um, the select board's approvals, which would be the class, uh, September 23rd and 24th, um, set up would be Tuesday through Friday, September 19th through the 22nd. Um, the needs include the ball field and um, all PVMA parking at 10 Memorial Street, which is the former grammar school. Uh, the fair is Sunday, the 23rd, 24th. So early morning set up at 6 a.m. Public hours are 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. when they break down on Sunday. So uh, I would um, make a an approval for the fee waiver. I will, yeah, I would make a motion to approve this. Okay. And um, waive the fee. Waive the fee. So and I'll we'll second that. Right. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And, and I want to thank Tim because he's so organized all the time. Yes. Um, he was really concerned. I just want to bring you up to date on that. Um, you know, we he had the Indian House under the CPA. Yes. We've been working to trying extend. hard to do that. We extended it yep. with the historical mass historical society. They have been really unresponsive. Come on, Tim so just got news like two days ago that um they are writing off. Oh, thank you. You know, goodness. they are approving it, they're sending someone out. And it should have all the paperwork to us. That was the code that stop them from yeah. selling out, right? Well, well stuff, and then it got supposedly. Busy. Yeah. Well, but anyway, they were very unresponsive to yeah. PVMA, and Tim has been. He's been very diligent. He's been really upset that he, you know, that he wasn't following through for us because that yeah. was the requirement of the CPA money was that it was signed off on, yep. it was appropriately used, we understand. and the project's been done for almost eighteen months. Yeah. And he just can't get a sign off from somebody from them. And they, so supposedly it's happening. Yeah, that's great. So I just okay. want to thank Tim for being diligent. That's great. You're welcome, Carolyn. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you too, Tim, because you weren't part of that application. That's right. He was at the time. Yep. Um, so that's done. So then there's, uh, let's see, there was, it says a letter from Chris Curtis, municipal vulnerability, but I don't think there is a letter from Chris Curtis. So I do see some. This is uh, looks like the application or it's the motion. letter of interest. Sorry, uh, Trevor. It's the letter of in it's a printout of the oh, letter of interest being received. Right. Okay. Great. Yep. And that kind of captures everything we talked about, right? Scope, healthy soils. Um. Yeah, it's got questions. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That looks good. Tree boxes. Okay. Sounds good. And then um, there's a support letter for remote participation. So this is our letter to Natalie Blay and Joe Comerford requesting a, a, a remote meeting extension for the local boards, which is thank you. I think everybody at MMA was all in the same boat on that. I'm not sure what the hang up is. It seems like the easiest vote you could make because everybody at MMA and all the town's people, we're all just, oh, go ahead, Casey. I, we're all in favor of just extending this. Um, 
Well, not just extending it, making a permanent change. And that seems to be the hang up. There are towns that have difficulty with remote and hybrid um, and have had difficulty with remote and hybrid since the pandemic. Yeah. Um, so that's one of the reasons they sort of walked back and did an extension, at least in, in my observation. Um, what we're really asking people is at least from my colleagues perspective is we need them to make a permanent decision and one of the things that was communicated to me in my stam group was making sure that we share that information with our legislative teams because yep. even individual committee chairs their voices need to be heard yep. um, so i think that's part of the impetus but frankly if if it if you're asking them to make a permanent change, and that's sort of how the letter's written, um, that long term can in increase your participation across the board. And many committees actually work remotely and have, have had very successful responses. We, Absolutely. And we need the flexibility. I mean, each town knows best how to do this. and. Right. and the, so you don't make it a demand. I don't no, tie it to, really, to a, it, that's it, really it. I mean. Board last, I don't know, whatever last year was, they were like every single board had to be hybrid. And it was like, there's no way, you, there's just no physical way to do that. And so there's a balance here that, that we really need to strike. And that's actually what my colleagues in STAM and my subcommittee have said. Mm. You know, we need to have it be equitable and available. Yeah. But we need to not be tied to a requirement that could be onerous for yeah. towns who's, who are already having trouble providing it because it can be expensive. I can't thank Joe and Natalie enough for fighting on our, our behalf for that. I mean, yes. they, they went to bat for us when when we saw that. I was panicked, and um, I know. We, gonna be, we, couldn't, we couldn't afford to do it. Um, Casey, the only thing um, I'd like to do is or have the board vote to do, send this letter, but also, can we? Can you just change the heading and stuff and send it to the governor, please? Um, do you want to send it to the legislature and copy the governor? Oh, well, that would be effective, yes. Okay, but, why yeah. don't we do it that way? Are there, there's one lang piece of, one, um, there's a word in there. So Chris was having trouble um, when we were discussing it and reviewing it, he was having trouble actually getting to the document itself to make some changes. There were a couple of word changes that I was concerned about. Um, does the board mind if I change thing, something like massively or Oh no! Frame a sentence so it's a little bit easier to read. No, I'm fine. Okay. Yep. But maintain the gist of what's said, and I say this to you all, knowing we have a, an editor on our team now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. If I saw massively in there, I'd be massively. Yeah, I want to take that out. <laughs> but we were having trouble getting that done. Um, <laughs> I, some, will, I will. make the most. I will make the motion for our board to support this letter with CCing the governor and have you, if you want to make changes, you can. I don't have any problem with that. And, uh, do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion? Uh, let me just, yeah, again, just making clear that this gives, this asks to give us the ability ability to do just what we're doing now if we have to meet in person we meet in person we if we have to, you know, we can yeah and if we if we right. have the ability or whatever works now to get more people participating we can do hybrid if we need well what it would what we would want it to do is allow us the discretion right. to determine what is the in the best interests of the community for the based on what the committee business is right and then you know, don't tie, don't force us to do something in particular. Give us the discretion to make a decision yeah. uh, that falls within the parameters of open meeting, exp especially with the experiences we've had in the last three years. And this is expensive enough as it is. Let, you it know, is. Every, all the staff having to monitor meetings late into the night and um, all the technical equipment we still need to work on. So. Yep. It's it's a, it's a nice happy medium from what we had before to now, and it's really hard to go full on with everything being being hybrid. So okay, yeah. so Thank all those you. in favor? 
Penelty, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. Thank you so um, much. Could could we just let Sarah know? I see that Sarah Alm is on. Yeah. And um, Sarah, we had brought up your concerns, and I have not been able to access my town email, so I'll let Casey explain to you. Uh, Kevin had responded. So I actually sent you an email, Sarah. I've been trying to actually hit send on that thing for five hours <laughs> because I kept getting people asking me questions. Um, I did hear from Kevin yesterday and I was trying to send this out. So he's spoken to the president of the Polish American Citizens Club and advised them that they need to have a certain distance cleared um, and is going to work to ensure that that intersection sugarloaf and south main is clear he has to be able to go do that during his routes but now that he's aware of your concern um he's going to try to ensure that that's the case thank you i guess i would just add that it's not just outside the pack but also wolfie's where the sidewalk is not raised Correct. um it's, it's that whole stretch yeah yeah and i don't i mean I think that might be a place to start. I can't imagine there's a lot of incentive for them to, they'd have to be standing out there all day to get vehicles not to park there. So I guess I'm just wondering, and I know this might not be able to happen immediately, but if there's any kind of, um, not permanent, obviously, because I know we need raised sidewalks eventually that have like a clear curb cut so that cars don't do that. But if there is a more semi-permanent solution to having like Jersey barriers of some sort to delineate where kids and adults are supposed to be able to walk there. Um, I don't know. That's just okay. what I was thinking, but I know that's probably also a question for the superintendent. Yeah. We'll talk to Kevin about it. I know he responded, but we'll both we'll touch base with him again. I haven't been able to talk to him personally, but um, he's definitely aware. Yeah. Thank so, you. So thanks for the letter. We appreciate you. You you know, reminding us and keeping us, keeping us honest. <laughs> I, I wanted you to know we were concerned. It's a safety yeah. issue and we certainly are taking it seriously. Thank you. And I know it, it becomes more of an issue in the winter, but I would say that it's not just winter. All, it's all, re all year. Yeah. <laughs> um. So thank you. <laughs> thank you very much for coming and attending. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Sarah, for your email. Uh. Let's see. So the the next Thank item you, you will sure um the next items are sewer abatements there's uh, i have a, a couple of, like the first one conrad valinsky at 20 conway street i don't see any it just says the property's been vacant um but I, I don't know what i don't have a bill here there's nothing that goes along with it so i'm not sure if they're what they're asking for um and so I don't really know what that's all about. I'll have to look into that one. I have not had a chance to look at the other ones I said I would, and then I was not around. So I got to get busy. I'm sorry. I've been Trevor, late. would but, it be helpful if we sat down maybe yeah, I, you I, and I Chris I mean, to go I, over them? Yes. We'll, um, we'll that, that way we can make an appointment. Well, the next one is just there's a note photocopied over all the information. So I, I don't see anything here. I don't know what this is either. Um, oh, maybe it's on the back side. I don't, I don't know. Um, which yeah, it, it, which uh, application is it? This is for Pauline. This is at 64 Gray Street, um, charge 22,012 for usage. Past bills were like 75. It looks like she's got a leak. So she's 98, living alone, no laundry done since 2020. COVID onset, no garden, no water, does not water lawn, impossible with sewage was four times the amount in the past. Water department state, stated um, such due to faulty water meter, new meter installed. Okay, so that's fine. So we can help with that if there's a new water meter. And yeah, that's obvious. I mean, you look at her bills, they're all right around 6,000 or just under, and uh, all of a sudden it's at 22. So that we can definitely address. Um, I, the first one there, I, I don't know what that is asking for. It just says that the, the property is vacant. Um, there's always a minimum usage charge, but I don't see any build along with the first one for 28 Conway Street. Um, 
So I, I'm, I'm not sure what they're what they need. Hold on. Yep. I'm just opening it so I can see it. I'm not sure about this one. Is here. Here's so 28. What's the name on 28 Conway Street? Conrad Valeski. Yeah, Conrad Valeski. Ah, there it is. Sorry, it was all the way at the end of the list. There might be a bill that came with it, like a, a sewer bill or water bill. I don't see one with it, though. Uh, I don't see one. Um, what we're going to need to do is get. Well, there was a the get sign, the bill. It was submit. Yes, it was submitted by her or his. Yeah, power of attorney. Yep. Yeah. So. I think we yeah. really need to look into that one. Yeah, let's just see. We what's need going the usage, on though. You guys need to have the bill, so we're going to have to ask um, Sarah for the bill. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we'll look at that. Um, we can definitely do an abatement on the other because of the um, because of the Alter faulty water. water meter. That that's pretty common. Um, the uh, the one at seventy two North Main Street. It it just it you already get an abatement for fill in the pool so that I, I we don't have an ability to do that one um and then the the other one about the the uh single family owner occupied i mean again if it's registered as a two family it's a two family I, we don't have any control over that whether it's rented or not so what we can do is find out if she if they want to convert it back yeah to if a they want to convert family. it back that would help them for sure yeah for sure. So, um, so we'll, I guess if I could sit with you, Casey, this this uh, Monday or something, we can just get through these. Okay. And and put them on the next agenda to have them approved. To be okay. there, there, if you look at this, it has nothing to do with two family because here is your here's your winter rate. Yeah. And then here's your summer rate. So right. you should you should only get to be charged one. 125 percent of, of the, the 64 thousand yeah so and the same as this here yeah. is your winter rate and this is your winter rate right so for some reason that year it was way low yeah but this is high yeah it's, so it's, there it's, should it's, be an abatement it should be it's already in there the abatement would already be in the system so we'll look up her abatement yeah she got it ready you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it should, this is pretty consistent. I mean, mm -hmm. other than that one year. Right. But which one are you talking about? Uh, the two or eight. Yeah, Sokolowski. Debbie, Debbie mm -hmm. Sokolowski. It's pretty, her records are pretty clear. Yeah. So it's, you know, it should be okay. Hmm. All right. So I'll sit. Anybody's welcome to come to and sorry. sit and go through all that. Uh, so, well, you just, I, I appreciate the fact that you're multiplying it all out. Yeah. And, and yep. checking. We'll definitely do that. No, Thank you. Bring Trevor. it for you to, to look at. Um, that's done. So, budgets, you know, uh, we, we need, never, we we're need so the busy. List of budgets. We need to, I talked with uh, Brenda today. She needs us to go through budgets tonight. Yeah. Well, okay. So, I talked to Brenda too. Um, she and I need to talk next week. I Let me tell you, there's a couple of things that are going to come across um, that do need to be addressed in contracted services, and I haven't had time to do that. Um, she's aware of that. Um, one of the things is having some uh, money set aside for maintenance. We had a... And capital is not met, but which, we did which, get a capital request. Which budget for, are you talking about? Well, so it's about contracted services. Okay. We may need to add some money to contracted services and make some adjustments, but those things are things that Brenda and I sit down and look at uh -huh. uh, based on bills and what we know is coming across for requests. So we've received a request from planning board, um, to institute a planner. Mm -hmm. um, when I discussed that with Anna Lee, she, she and I both thought it made sense to house that person under the select board 
auspices because that person is going to cover different departments. Correct. And there was uh, one of the select board members mentioned during the conference last weekend consideration of a grant writer. So a lot of planners also write grants. Um, that could be a change in select board salaries. And that's actually something Brenda and I have talked about. Mm -hmm. But we needed to sort of solidify that a bit. Uh, um, so there's a couple of things that I would like the opportunity to address with her. And she and I have both been trying to meet with each other and had difficulty this past two days. Um, she does want to have as much done as she can. Well, I'm going to start oh. with this one. We got select board salaries, one, two, two, five, one, oh, oh, uh, chair is 6,000, second member, 5,000, third member, 5,000. Same. Same. Um, any, um, I'll make a motion to approve that. Where, where, where was uh, this? Oh, I'm sorry. You, this would be in, um, two days, two last meeting. We got a bunch of stuff. Uh, oh, last budget. Okay, I was wondering, yeah. Yeah. If you go back, you could. You have them or not? Yeah, yeah. I'm sure I do. And I just, uh, yeah, take your time. No, which these are just our normal. Yeah. I thought we'd get through at least the easy peasy ones so we could just get them done. How close to the back of the It was the, uh, it was, let's see, this was meeting for the, uh, the January 11th. It'll be in that packet. Yeah, January 11th. Mm -hmm. So it'd be these right here. I mean, I'm just trying to figure out how far back. I would say right in the middle. Because it looks like 20 pages. Okay, here it is. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Um, so I made a motion. Do you want to second already that? Seconded. Oh, you already seconded it. Yeah. Is that the select board salaries? Yeah. Okay. It should be where we After the, yeah. After all that. A bunch of pages of the goal. Oh. Well, this is December, so it can't be that. No, I mean, that we go further in your packet. Oh, so it's. Oh, you know, separate them. You got to get you some of these. Yeah, I don't have any of those. Okay, <laughs> there you thing. go. There you go. Right there. Yep. Uh, so the first one is this one right here. Yeah. Yep. Okay, great. So that's really just carrying through as normal, unless we all want to give ourselves a raise. What did you say? 16,050? Yeah, no. 16,000. Yeah, that's kidding. Oh. <laughs> so, um, okay. So all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. Uh, this is um, 127. So uh, select board staff salaries. This is where you were thinking you might want to talk about adding a, a planner. Um, that's what they've requested it's up to everybody to discuss it right um, but yes tentatively we would put that in there but in the meantime we have your salary uh the assistant town administrator salary we have the um the admin assistant salary with um some overtime some overtime so here's the thing we've had op we've had issues where we've actually had to um pay people over time we don't do it a lot no but um, i people but i think like budget. every other budget we need to yep i agree with that start that thinking sense. about what that looks like so it was a nominal amount yep brenda and i talked about it and thought we needed to start doing that yeah i think that makes sense because we are you know there's meetings that run late they come in early a day or something like that yeah we should definitely cover that um and then we had the part-time admin support um and that looks like that's increased this year um right because we increased um hours for alex hirsch and rudder right correct okay so and that reflects we what longevity. we increased it to which is 19 hours a week yep and we got longevity pay so and then so i'm good with this and then if you want to bring it back and we'll bring and, it back after she and i have a chance to look at exactly. it so um do you want to vote it now and then have her bring it back to us or just wait? I'm I'm fine either way, Trevor. So I'm just, just trying to understand it. Sure. the executive administrator assistant that's got nothing. Because it was an old position, Tim. Yeah, that's why I just want to make was, sure. Yep. And the we thing carry about, back five years. Yeah. And the thing about Alex is is that the part-time admin support? Yes. 
Yeah, we're actually, I'm going to have her change that to administrative assistant because that's the function he's, he's actually yeah. uh, doing. It's mm -hmm. just, it's a part-time position as to, as opposed to a full-time position. Right. Okay. And so you're projecting for 2024 yep. that it's going to be 19 hours a week. Yep. Nine, eight, 988 is the total. Yep. For the number of hours. Yep. For the number of hours. Um, so why don't we approve this? And then if you want to change it, just bring it back to us. I will bring it back to you. Yes. Okay. So I'll make a motion to approve this now. And then if you have a change, just bring it back and we'll, we'll run it by us again. Um, so make a motion to approve the select board salaries at uh, $275,650. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hill, gee, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. Um, select board and administration expense. Um, we don't have any numbers in here yet. Let's see, we have meetings, which is like MMA. Right. We do. Um, and then we have trainings. Uh, we do quite a bit of that lately. And then postage. Um, so I was going to... I was going to level fund that for now, unless right. I find something. And really, I, I kind of wanted to wait until after we had all the receipts for the uh, MMA conference. <laughs> that's the reason it isn't filled in. Right. No, that's I thought funny. about it and I said something to Brenda. <laughs> I think a level fund is fine. We usually cover pretty well on this. We do. Yep. So I'll make a motion to approve the... Um, uh, select board administration expense 122 dash 5400 at $12,250. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. You know what? I just looked at the Board of Health thing here again. I was just going to file it here. I, I think we made a mistake on the Okay, so we should, expense or, or no the actual salary. payroll we were we were supposed to have 10 1040 hours for Alex 1040 and we didn't we didn't put in Dick's pay What's so we that? can address that yeah thought, well the alternates are forty two dollars an hour it doesn't matter who they are right but that 250 that 250 hours we had lowered that to 200. Because that's for Val or or Gina, whoever comes. So we had lowered that to two hundred. Remember, mm -hmm. so that so that it should be less than ten thousand. Alex is is less, and and Dick's you got to carry over. Well, Dick's is a um, he's an alternate, right? So do we no. need to increase well, those hours then from two fifty to? No, no, no. His his hours were um, half. His hours were too. This is too high for him. He's not not. Uh, but he's not an actual. He's not actually going to be listed as hours. Uh, yeah, no. His hours are listed because he's he's right now he's our only soil evaluator. But isn't he under? He won't he be fall under alternate agent. No, that's how it's been treated in the past, Carolyn. Oh, has it? Yeah. Okay, well, let me just figure out so how the total to for all alternates should include what we could expect. Okay, so the alternate, so Dick's hours should be 468. So plus if we 250 plus no, plus 200, plus 200, plus 200. So, so it's 668. 668. Okay. Um, at 42. At 42. Okay. Is 19. Thousand six fifty six and um twenty hours is a thousand forty, which is what I think I gave you, Casey. Mm -hmm. That's at forty eighty three. So that should be forty two thousand four sixty three. Okay. So, and how many hours was that going to be? A thousand forty. Under okay. So, if you got um, thousand forty for white. So then, if you got that plus the nineteen nineteen six fifty six 
plus Cindy Majewski's 26, 250. 1,040. Mm -hmm. It comes to 88, it's slightly less. It's $88,369. Okay, Casey? $88,369. Okay. Instead of $89,329. It's okay. $88,369. We'll just give this to her and Brenda can give us an update. Yeah. I was just going to say, if he gives it to me, then I can start working with Brenda to do the data inputs. Okay. okay. Sorry. No, no, it's fine. It's I'd fine. rather fix it now. Yeah. That's you could scratch that right off all of that. That was years ago. Yeah. Yep. For alternate, exactly at forty-two is uh, nineteen six fifty-six. Yeah. Okay. And then the base for the base for um, for the nurse is correct, right? At twenty-six yeah. two fifty. Okay. All right. That's good. Do you want to just vote that right now then? Wait, wait, that can't, that can't be right. Let me just. I say, why don't we send this back to the people who yeah. wrote it up to begin with and let them figure it out and get it accurate and then bring it back to us. I know, but uh, there's no point so in you calculating it. You're not the account. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> well, the problem is this is a this is a team effort because of, by the time, yeah, no, 624 or 625 is correct. I'm sorry. So our number's right. Yes, those numbers, her number is right. Okay. It just seemed low. You want to me. vote this then? Yeah, yes, we should re vote 88,000. We didn't yet, but oh. we can. So Board of Health payroll for FY24 is uh, 88,369 dollars. Yes. Thanks. Um, do I have a second on that motion for motion to approve Board of Health payroll 2024 is 88,369. I'll yes. second it subject right. to verification for the accountant. <laughs> yeah. Good. We'll get that from the accountant next week. Because oh, she's gonna crazy. she'll do some of the so she has a workbook that she uses and she is allowed to get into it. There's like one other person that's allowed to get into it. And All she right. does data inputs based on what we discuss okay. and get back to her. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, Tim. Uh, do you want to vote okay. the Board of Health expense? Yes. But okay. we better. So it's $1,000 more than last year. So it's $14,975. Yeah. Okay. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve at 14975. Okay. I will second that. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. Nice work. Okay. Um, legal expense. Did we have any idea on that yet? We don't. I sent the email. I haven't um, received an answer back. All right. We'll hold on that one. Um, Personnel board to make a motion to approve for seven hundred fifty dollars, or do you think they need anything else for? Do they need the work on their doing. Should we, for the should we put in legal but, fees for any? At this point, I don't know. Um, what we did since I got the ten thousand dollar grant to do the person basically do a personnel policy manual. Yep. Um, we're gonna send. Hopefully, most of it'll be kosher because we vetted we're using examples to yeah. do these these policies and pull them pull them together there will be some review yep. um i have some money right now the intent is to have this ready so that we can vote it at town right. meeting okay. which means i can take some of that 750 for legal split it if i have to all right so we'll just do 750 again yeah just level fund it for now Make a motion to approve the personnel board at 750. I will make that motion. Any mm, further second, discussion? Second, oh, yeah. Well, yep. I don't know. I think Trevor made a motion. I made a motion. You oh, seconded it. Second it then. Thank Sorry. You. All right. And Tim Hilchey, aye. All those in favor? Yeah, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn, we'll get this right. We'll get this. We practice. We're going to practice this. By the time we get to the IT budget, we're all set. Um, this IT budget is an, an anomaly for me. We spend way more than $5,000 on IT. And um, it's actually hardware software, right? 
that piece of it is hardware software. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's enough. It some years it is, other years it isn't. We're actually ever since Northeast has been in here, it's nowhere near. I mean, they well, find we had a rotating problem. schedule with them. Problem. Um right now I'm loath to increase it because we never know. If we have to go to finance committee for a yeah. transfer, we will. Just like um, to look at all that IT and it just does something's not right there. We got to figure that all out. Well, you and I were supposed to meet about that. We are. We're going to meet about that. Okay. So you want to just level fund this at I five? I would level fund it for now. Okay. And this doesn't have anything to do with like um, if we're going to get a permitting software for the buildings department. No. Or something. And that's yeah. coming out of a different budget. Yes. Um, this is literally buy a computer if you have to. Okay. Yeah. We're just to let you know um, under the public health excellence grant software. Permitting software will be paid for. So um, we're, right. we're just trying to figure out which, but so the annual, but the annual fees are not paid for. So we, the purchase, yeah, the big expense up front will be covered. Great. And we're going to all buy the same software, but we're trying to figure out which would be most advantageous on a yearly basis and would give us actual support. We just need to do that and I get know, into the 21st I know. century here. I know. It's crazy people out there. But we've already down. purchased two different softwares. Companies have gone bankrupt mm -hmm. over the years. I don't know. You were involved you in the second cho choice. Better than what we have. We didn't buy anything for permitting. Um, and that's actually, I got a request for a capital request. And after the request we had, so after Bob and I talked about the um, housing thing, um, it demonstrated very clearly that we could have spent at the most 20 minutes to half an hour looking that information up, Carolyn. It took three hours. We're going to, um, I'm going to rock and roll on these because it's sorry. getting late. So yeah. IT, uh, motion to approve IT. Double funded at 5,000 seconds. Yes. Thank you. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. Um, I'm going to hold on contracted services because that's usually a budget, a lot to work with. Open Space Committee at 250. Yes, I make that motion. Thank you. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness. Great. Uh, town office expense. Mm -hmm. um, this is telephone, town reports, publishing. My rug that never happened. Mm -hmm. Um, need more than a rug, and you and I can argue about that. Um, we really have to take care of that because this is a liability. Oh, I've gotten all sorts of grief from Kevin about it, mm -hmm. and we did have a quote for it, but we needed to refresh it. Just feel like um, you know, we have not, we haven't painted in here, we haven't done anything in this building, and since I've been here, and it's a no. really rough shape. It, you know, but I'm hope we'll just level fund for now. Maybe we can all. As a if we have to make an adjustment, I'll let you know. Talk about that. Okay. I'll make so a motion to approve it. Approve it at 14,000. Yeah. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. I feel like some work to do. I know Chief's going to get some painting done. We just need to. Yeah, but while we're in here this, for a little this bit. This is actually really I know it is. It is. Yeah, Gentlemen, we're going to try to work on that, Carolyn. General insurance is this is not the um this is not the health group, right? No, this is, this just, is our, uh, our building liability, that sort of thing. Do we think we're good at level funding or do no, we it's, no. it's going up three point nine percent? Yeah. All right. So we're what we'll do is we can do that calculation minus, um, minus our credits. But and we, we never know what that's gonna be. Yes. Although I did go to like, I don't know, three or four of those. <laughs> At the meet at the MMA conference. Um, this is what they announced. So Sixty five thousand five twenty. I I feel like it's going to be very advantageous for us for me to be on the advisory committee because I'll know which what to do for credit. Oh, I did four percent. Oh, you did four percent. Yeah, just to, just to cover us a little well, bit. Well, Tim, what will happen is they'll send us a bill, and we have to pay the full amount. But then they'll give us a. a I mean, it's like this, the water rebate. Yeah, it's a it's a credit. Yeah. Uh, and I want you to know that we went and I used my QR code I did successfully. Too. Yep. Oh, good for you! I'm proud of good you. Good for you. Good job. 
Um, okay, so I'll make a motion for the general insurance at $65,520. Again, revisit it if you need to, it's fine. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hill, GI. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn, that's I. I Like I said, that's what they announced at the advisory board meeting. The emergency management, um, we have a level fund at 2800 I have a question. Yeah? Do we want to pay the assistant EMD a stipend as well? Yeah. I've been thinking so, about it. Yes. It's, so, it's, it's, yes. I think it's something we could think about. I'd like to actually look at it, maybe not necessarily right this second, but could we do that and then bring it back to the board, Trevor? Yep. So you don't want to wait on this then? Um. No, I think we Just need to approve, approve it. it. Yeah. Approve it and it. It. We can come bring it back for a change. Yep. So make a motion to approve emergency man management at $2,800. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hill, GI. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. ADA coordinator at $250. Um, I'll make a motion. Can we have an assistant ADA coordinator? Nope. You can delegate the job if you want. Oh, good. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Chris? Where's Chris? No, not Chris. Actually, Kevin and I argue about this all the time. Yeah, yeah. Nicely, was, with no raised voices. Yeah. We chat. <laughs> he was the coordinator for years before you got back. I'll second. Okay. Any any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hill, GI. I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn, that's I. Unfunded sick leave and vacation. Is that 10000 Yes. That's typically what we vote. Yep. yep. I'll make a motion to approve it. Thank you. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hill, GI. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn Ness, I. Council on Aging at level, level fund at 500. Make a motion to approve. Thank you. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hill, GI. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn Ness, I. Here, look at that. If you got me more, I would do more for you. Just like that. Okay. <laughs> Get on. We can get a budget in no time. Well, we're still working. So I have to say, and Trevor knows this um, because of the council meeting, but we're looking at a 6% increase for insurance, health insurance. It went yeah. up. So, so we're going to work on that. Brenda, Sarah, and I are going to work on that. I'll chime in, but I'm in terms of talking with the two of them. But the reason Trevor knows is because it hit the it hit the cog as well because they're a participant in Hampshire Trust. A day before the meeting, so we had a day before the meeting we got the news. So so they could had time to redo all the budgets and get everything out to everybody. So everybody right because it affects it's across the board for us. Um, we could be looking at a slight increase with changes in hours in some departments for sort of taking a person from part-time to full-time, um, even if it's a prorated amount, we have to include that in the budget. So there's a little bit of tweaking that needs to happen. And I found out about that uh, about the same time as the COG and us found out about the 6% from the trust. Is um, are, are we thinking of doing any incentives for people to take insurance elsewhere? Like in the school? I don't know. That's a policy question. And we don't... We've talked about it for years. And I really think that you know, especially with the number of, of add-ons at the, at the end of the school year or the beginning of the school year, we should take advantage of that somehow. All right, so you want to consider that? Yes, I do. It might have to be something that doesn't go into place right away if it's a personnel policy. Let me chat with, so this comes up routinely in my STEM and HR listservs. Let me chat with a couple of people and why don't we talk about it a little more once we have numbers plugged in for um, health insurance? All right. Okay. Moving but along. Yeah, I think you're right, Carolyn. Friday night. Um, geez, uh, let's see. We've got a few other things to talk about here. I'm going to run down real quick. We've got the 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 DTLA to talk about. There's the. I, uh, let's, we can do that real quick. Okay. I think we're pretty um, consistent on the open space. Yeah. The, no, the master, master plan, master because plan. that's going to be required yep. for a lot of uh, the things in the new administration, I believe. Right. The other thing I really want to check um, is, is the second one is managing flood risks regionally. Um, you know, I have the local working group creating resilient communities, which is part of the um, 
Franklin Conservation District. We've been meeting since December of 2011. But if if the FERCOG is, is willing to organize this more, this is really quite, I mean, I would flood, like to check this. The flood thing again? Yeah, right here. How many times are we going to deal with floods though? Because climate it's like change. every single time we yeah, deal with floods. Risk. But it's not our biggest, like, Plus, it's most money. But it's how big a priority is it? I, okay. I'm just saying that we do the master plan, and then as a secondary thing, I would like us to check the managing risks regionally. And it makes are, sense if we can get some support for that. Where is this? How so, back is this? Um, this is in today's. In today's packet. In today's packet, you'll see it because it's duplicate because we had it last week. We had too. it last week. And this is from FERCOG, like picking the things that we wanted to deal with. That's and I'm not seeing this. Is it, is it behind the Comerford thing? Maybe uh, it right. was right after Here, the Tim, step you can have in, mine. In, uh, it was right after the step in uh, the step Here. In. No. Right here. Give me mine. Yeah. Here. I'm fine with it. I already have a copy at home. Yep. This is I, uh, my my things were let me just see if i have anything here i i, I think we should do the master plan that's the number one that's number one okay consensus we all for sure consensus. yeah that's what that's definitely what the planning board was hoping for and all of that annally um, annally i mean the whole planning board has been supportive of that the rural policy plan implementation um And we are supposed, supposed to pick one. three? Yes. And yeah. there was one. So the rural policy thing, that's something that a lot of the small towns are looking at, the rural communities, rural policy advisory. We'd, re we'd really like that to turn into something that's permanent. But there was something else I was really, I was like, oh, I really wanted to do. Okay, flooding it is. What about. <laughs> What about this Northfield Mountain pump storage? <laughs> yes, not not for us. Not for us. That's north of us. Yep. I mean, that's a really serious issue. It is. Yeah. I, and I'm not downplaying it all, but it's on the Connecticut River. That's not really doesn't affect mm -hmm. us that much. Mm -hmm. So if we're if we're limited to three things, I it's not one that I would pick. Although there are communities that we should support in picking that. And sometimes they will ask us to do that. Yeah. Um, I'd actually like to make a plug for diversity, equity, and inclusion training. I think yeah. that's a good thing. I would love that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because it's a municipal sort of focus. Definitely. Um, it could help all the, ta the towns, but yes. something that we're all experiencing. Yep. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, that's perfect. Is it number two though, or is flooding number two? I, we can do flooding as number three. All right. I just Sounds because good. there is, I told you I there is the local working group already yep. Yep. that we participate in that I chair and I have for eleven years. But okay. I, I just it's not going away. It's only getting get worse. Right. And we gotta engage other communities. Yep. And stay engaged. Okay. So can you recapitulate what we're doing? So what you're doing is you're you're picking your top three choices. Oh no, which three short? Which three? yeah. So right now I have master plan is number one, diversity, equity, and inclusion training is two, and flood the regional flood flood management is three. Is that so, correct? So moved. Do you want Tim. the bottom of the bowl story, Tim? No. <laughs> <laughs> mosquitoes. I want mosquitoes. <laughs> okay. Just wait, it's coming, Tim. Soon as we get mosquitoes back. Yep. Um, in okay, January, so I saw mosquitoes. Carolyn. We had a mosquito in my Records car. Archiving proposal from Becumbe Valley. Okay. So I had a conversation with Tim Newman. We talked about having an agreement. Um, I have to get counsel on the agreement. Okay. And basically what I explained to Tim is, yes, you store the records. You are actually subject to public records uh, requests law um but i said to him you know that's something that we could collaborate on he was a little concerned about it the librarian if they ever got a public records request they're going to have to ask us anyway yeah. so i think he's but, less concerned about that than he was but i don't want to put words in his mouth that was my impression. Stuff in the 1888 building no this is stuff that they already have okay and then we're going to take up the additional stuff 
additional yes, stuff great. from the 1888 building. Good. They're willing to, to store for us. Good. The, and they put it, when they archive it, and they, number one, they keep it so it's, yeah. you know, good, yep. a good place to store it. But then they also digitalize it. It's and awesome. I try it. I tried to explain to Tim if it's digitized and it's available to the public, it doesn't matter if you get you can if it's if it's stored somewhere that somebody can get to it on the on the line. That's all I have to tell people to do. That's all you do is you have a, you have the lawyer have our town council give them a little statement yep. that if they get a public records request, all they do is give them the statement yep. that it's and online the link and go get because it. Because Tim, they do it correctly. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm all for it. Completely. Yeah, me too. And Tim and I talked about it. I think he's more comfortable than he might have been before. You're not doing it no charge for us. Yeah, it's huge help. It's huge yeah, help. And it's important. It's Very like huge. Digitalize it. They're doing right. the, all the correct things. So Digitize. Digital, yep. A digital outside. Digital form. Yes, it's in digital <laughs> form. It's so that you can go online. So the if someone, so somebody wants to do this, you can get it done. Yes, sounds good. Okay. Without Excellent. Casey so, having uh, to do contract. It. Uh, we we did the we did the open meeting law complaint. So, so let me just ask, please, Casey. Um, basically, we agree that what you're doing, you're going to get town council to to do an agreement, all the rough edges off it, and and then do we you'll bring it back to us or do you just want to just authorize her to go ahead and deal with this? We, I'm, we, I'm fine. What do you want to do? <laughs> I would just soon have you guys. Okay. Decide what's... I, the only reason Tim was concerned is because he was overwhelmed with the, you know, when you were talking about all the things you have to do and the it's public like, records yes. it's online, there's nothing you have to do. Yeah, right. exactly. Yep. So you just, just calm them down and well yeah i'll tell them this is how we deal with it when we have a public records request that we have information online our response is this is available to the public on the town's website right. it's actually pretty it's a pretty short letter fun but it's going to be a lag from when he takes those cartons from the right. basement up to his place they archive them and they're putting them online it, yep. it's it's going to be a little bit yeah, it's not yeah. like no, no one could get them now, anyways. I mean, right. like, <laughs> they need a key. Need a key and I have keys. <laughs> read this stuff. It's written in you know cursive from eight. Seven, oh eight, yeah, it's hard to read. Z. Um, but no, it'll be, it'll be great to to digitize it for sure. And I'm happy to take that on and okay. make sure the agreement gets signed and everything. Thank it's up you. to you how you want to do it. Just, just make them not feel like it's <laughs> contract would, signatory yeah. the for word need, senior needs earmark. Okay, so the senior needs earmark was very graciously followed up on by Joe. Thank you very much. Um, I got the contract information and they have me as the contract signatory, which happens on a lot of these contracts with the state. Um, this is a hundred thousand dollar earmark. I want the board, if they're comfortable with me being the signatory, to vote it so that it's official. Yes. So nobody questions. I make, it. I make you the. I make a motion that we make you be the signatory. I'm fine <laughs> with that too. I just this money needs to be in co uh, conjunction with the boo, like. Right. This was money was given to all three towns for this specific thing. We need it was for senior needs and the boo has discussed all this, but I think yeah. Trevor, you said they wanted to go over and look at the congregational the church. A walkthrough and Jennifer had kind of put a request out in a doodle pool poll. And I, I gotta get back to that. And I, it's just been a little crazy for the last few weeks. But I, I, I we all want to get in there, walk around. What Denise can we do with this thing? Different. She definitely does. I sent her a yeah. copy of it and um you can use it for construction. That's really what Jennifer and I have talked yeah, about. We need to kind of all come together and do that. But I just want to make sure that we've got all three towns on board. So there is no division. We're all doing this all together. The money doesn't get spent. And they're like, where'd the money go? And so as long as we're all together on this, we're going to be in great shape. Uh, so do you I need think a you have a motion on the floor, Trevor. Uh, there's a motion for? Yes, and I'll second it for to make Casey oh, the signatory. You. All those in favor? Tim Hill, GI. Trevor McDaniel. Aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. There's um, placeholder um, general appointments for M.A. Sweedland for the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District. Rep? Yes. M.A. is the alternate um, okay. on the district. And so I didn't realize that she had been the alternate for a while. So we need to revote that. And make her the permanent rep. 
No, not necessarily, but make sure she's listed as the alternate. The okay, president. so I'll make a motion to approve M.A. Sweedland as the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District rep uh, alternate. I'll second that. Any further discussions? All those in favor? Milchie, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And then there's a uh, vote for... Um, Julie Caswell. Julie Caswell for the Open Space Recreational Committee. I make that motion. Second. All those in Casey favor? Oh, you got a, a note on No, 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 it's not about Julie. Keep going. All those, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. And there was a note about the board members as special municipal employees. Is that what you want so to bring? So we received a request from Janamine to have all the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District board members identified in their towns as special municipal employees. So the request was for each town to say, okay, your two board members, the the regular and the alternate, are special municipal employees. The board actually would have to take that vote. Why would we want to do that? Um, it's a request. It, it's similar to how we define special municipal employees internally. Um, Jan's suggestion is for the to replicate what happens with many other special municipal employee designations in towns. It's board, it's, I, anybody that's a board member, volunteer board member, not yeah. We do it with zoning. We do it with, I think we do it with planning too, right, Carolyn? It gives you liability. It's, okay. Yeah, it's a protective measure. And I think this is why Jan Aminas wants to do this, is it gives them liability protection. Okay, so yes. I'll make a motion to approve that. Uh, the, the all board members from the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District are special municipal employees. Our Deerfield, Deerfield. Deerfield. Our Deerfield, Deerfield board special. members. Yeah. Now second um, it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thanks for help with the ex explanation, Carolyn. <laughs> no, no, it's just it's yeah. a liability issue. Do you want to? Uh, do you want to go home or do you want to do a town administrator's report? I don't. So with the conference and some of the other things that have happened in here, I don't have a lot to report. And I, I feel very bad about that. No, don't. Uh, we're very pleased that we can go home. And we don't have any mail either, right? Uh, we do have some mail. And you wanted to talk about this real quick before. So Joe Comerford did send something and Tim wanted to talk about it. Basically, I, it was the legislative priorities that Joe Comerford had sent. But also, I included Natalie's legislative priorities. In other words, the things that have been filed. Yeah. I, I want to make sure that we support the pilot bill yes. that is a formula remake. I want to do the municipal public safety building um, infrastructure yes. bill. I want to support. Um, Wait a minute. Tax Let me just mark let's, these. Let's, let's see. You want to just go one by one and go yeah. through these real yeah, quick? Yeah. Why don't you go one by um, item by item? Well, education, I mean, right? As they appear in here. Yeah. Kind of okay. Education. No, that's fine. I, I wrote them down as they appear. Okay. okay. Demonstrate. So, uh, let's see. Like we're starting with pilot. Where is that? Oh, well, because I didn't. Experience. None of the That's educational cool. ones yeah, were, fun I felt, well, were really worth our writing a letter yeah. about. Uh, what a, wait a second. There was one of them that had to do with the, the uh, circuit breaker, right? It's one of the fun issues. Well, it's fun to special education fairly. Yeah. But it doesn't, it says just more equitably and it yeah, doesn't really come. That really can, uh, it, was a, it was to set up a commission to look at the funding formula for special education funding and I thought that was kind of important. All right. Um, That's fine so with just me. A note on that. Um so anything under energy and environment. Uh let's see. Wait, uh suppose oh energy and environment. So track emissions no track carbon pollution. Can't say for the agriculture. Planning. Um donation. Promote hemp growing and hemp industry. Is that something we care about? I don't know. I'm I'm promote solar power over parking lots. So um that might be really helpful long term for these concepts around 
the municipal. I think campus. it will help us because right now where they're putting the solar fields are in our areas. Mm -hmm. It doesn't benefit us, but all the sol big giant solar farms are coming out here and eating up our open space. So yes. and then, if requiring them over parking lots, I think. Protect rate payers from utility hikes. I noticed they're going backwards on the rate hike. Um, but I worry a little bit about that stuff because you can't like, I don't know. I just, I get worried about messing with capital, capitalism. It's really hard sometimes to like. I, well, they I, get the, I, they get I, the I, evil. They yeah. get the evil. Like you know, I mean, electrical companies certainly get the whip, right? Um, but some part of it is econo pure economics as well. Um, yeah, I mean, basically, so though, I mean, I feel like a lot of a lot of things that are regulated by the government, mm -hmm. they build in. Um, a guaranteed rate of return, which yeah. you know they might not even get if they didn't have regulation. Um, right. So it's still. Oh, I'm, to, I'm all about regulation, you know. And when and it comes to, I, I look at my bill and I say, I get charged three times for delivery. Yeah. What I get for actually buying the electricity. Yeah. And if they can't provide the services, you know, then why are we protecting them as a company? Mm -hmm. Right. You know, there's no competition. Right. So right. anything that uh, holds their feet to the fire, I think yep. is a fine thing. No, I think so too. I think there, there's that happy meeting. But I, but I do that, think that there's yeah. that there's an, an importance to reg, like Reagan comes in and deregulates everything. It's just, it, that's when everything went through the roof. Yeah. Um, but the, so there is some oversight, but some of it is also pure like economics as well. Mm -hmm. but, oh yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, the, the slight, the, the 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 prices they have to pay laborers it's yeah, a, yeah it all factors into it does it, it sure does and uh, so let's see but this, but it's this, this all this is doing is to make higher profits up in the, the, to no more that. earn no more than the average of neighboring states it's kind of oh yeah yeah uh, that's fine I'm okay with yeah, it I think that's, I can support that's, that that's, all right it's basically saying Massachusetts has got the highest rates yeah in New England um, and this remove cap on fossil fuel free demonstration projects is basically saying you know we need to we need to allow more of these projects right is that what it's saying? so what is there's a cap on them let's see Massachusetts approved a historic law allowing up to 10 municipalities to prohibit. we didn't oh we didn't qualify remember yeah see I worry about this so it's it says that so some communities I know with a stretch code coming up too that you could you could so a company could come to town or a building could come in and you could force them not to use fossil fuels. My worry is that we all want that to happen, but to to legislate that it, it's not allowed is like we're gonna so this is going to be really expensive. I would suggest the board if they want to get some framework for what this might look like on the side of the residents and or um business owners they might want to talk to the building commissioner yeah he's a lot of background in this because of his construction background right i don't know so i'm, I'm not really a fan of that cap yeah that's cap that's fine i was wondering actually about this um quab and watershed even though yeah we have nothing to do with quab Me too. And I, it's um we have it's state forest in yes. town so i agree with that helps them is going to eventually help us where was that one that, that one's before. Just before. before yeah i agree with that you have the watershed Yep, let's support that and our neighbors there for sure. Because it, it does relate, whether it's water or yeah. solar or something else. And as far as rate payers go, I'm, I'm agnostic. The next one is something you might want to think about too. It's the facilitate efficient transportation of materials. And they specifically talk about um, hauling costs for weight limits on trucks. Rural towns feel this. We work with the... the um, Franklin County Solid Waste Management District, but it's it's all materials. So it may be something we want to investigate a little bit more. Hmm. That's interesting. Hauling costs have, have increased significantly. Yeah, I'd like to learn more about that bill yeah, for sure. No, you guys need to, we need to look at it, but it's something that pop, it sort of struck me. I, I'm not sure if uh, it's okay to start, but I'm not sure that we want mm -hmm. yeah. tandem trucks or not. I yeah. think we have time. This is the beginning of the two-year legislative process. 
I know. We don't know what it's going to look like in six months either. No. Nope. So strengthening our food system, this is an act strengthening local food systems, um, you know, supporting the local farmers and stuff. State. So state food, what is it? State food system uh, coordination position. And for new farmers, permitting farm stands to include be included as agricultural land for tax purposes. I I mean it's okay, especially um, yeah. this will dovetail with some of um, natural resource and conservation service yeah. money coming into the state. I mean it's going to triple in the next two years for a while. Yeah, and so something like this could help get money out on the street. And really. She wants to do uh, this is right up your alley. The mosquito management. Well, it's actually very disappointing. It is. This was a whole task force review of how archaic the yeah. state reclamation board is and yeah. how, how disadvantaging it is to us as a new startup as mm -hmm. Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District. And all she's doing is saying that, you know, we're, we're going to do more education and eliminate pesticides, which is fine. But it's not, except for emergencies, but very few, I mean, we certainly out here, we don't spray. And there are very few spraying operations that are not emergencies. So yeah. All for right. disease, to control okay. disease. So, I Officers. mean, I don't care if we support it because it doesn't really hurt, but it doesn't really hurt. Yeah, I mean. It doesn't address what's really wrong with the state reclamation board. It's it's uh, a little bit disappointing. Um, I don't think any of these bills are necessarily bad, but yeah, right. Well, um, it just doesn't pilot? do a lot. Right. Pilot is keep going. You'll see the pilot. It's on the um, it's on the same page. It's under housing, infrastructure, and tax reform. So it's under okay, yeah. It's uh, fair reimbursement to rural cities and towns. It's yeah, that one definitely. Yeah, that was my number one priority. I wish they would just expand it to include you know nonprofit, you know prorated nonprofit annual taxing. So but fair reimbursement to rural cities and towns this oh that's the pilot one yeah okay got it yeah so that's good um, and then the next one was um well the next one on my list was support local municipal and public safety buildings yep um, creating yep. a municipal public but again make it more than a million million a million dollars exactly. is, Not enough. is really yep. just a damn a million dollars is a drop in the bucket, right, Carol? Doesn't, I mean, it doesn't even design. pay for planning. Right. Yeah, you you're right. don't do anything for a building. So again, a little disappointed on that. Um, and yeah, then yeah. the next one I had was tax benefit to all firms. Um, I think this is, what this does is you have that minimum five acre what we're trying to do on the federal level is remove the five acre minimum for people yeah. to participate in NRCS programs because we have all these little backyard ones yeah. and urban gardens are like yeah. half acre, a quarter acre. So well, I think look at that though. You wouldn't want everybody to just throw a garden in the backyard and not get any taxes for your. But community. you have to be able to. You're commercial. You're getting oh, got commercial. Oh, got it. Commercial. Got it. Oh, but that's fine. Um. What okay. what's happening is we're trying to remove the on the federal level is five acres yep. requirement. And I think this is doing it on the state level. All right. Anything else? Um yes, yeah, support rural communities. Yeah, exactly. Um is what I had. And the last one was um the veterans. Mm -hmm. Keep veteran services local. Yes. So that's our reimbursement and also recognize um veterans public service. Those just those two. Okay. Um, Sounds good. And I assume um, Natalie's, Natalie's are included as well. Some of them dovetail, not all of them. Okay. 
In other words, they sh they've shared some sponsorship right. of bills. It looks like they, they have, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, these are hard to read. Yeah. I know, it was, there was a link to get to it and it was hard for me to print. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I think I forwarded you the email, but I can forward it again if you'd like to see it. Come back to this or yeah. do we have, yeah, why don't we, let's not take all night. We can do this another time. Um, well, when is our next meeting? Uh, okay. It is, hold on a second. February. February. Okay, I'm going to try this differently so I'm not dropping things. Look at my Outlook calendar because it's easier. February 8th is our next February week. 8th, I think. Good. I knew what the 6th was, Carolyn. The 6th was a Monday. That's kind of stuck in my head. Yeah, well, we have a meeting already that day. but Yeah, so the 8th. Can you, can you make sure you post it? Although there's supposed to be a snowstorm that day, but can you post that as a select board meeting? The sixth? Is this most of them? No, the sixth. How do you know this? this because two I, weeks away. Are you reading all the Weather alert. Spotter. You no, got but... the farmer's almanac. Oh, what, about? <laughs> <laughs> what? So is that a select board meeting that I wasn't aware of? Or? Oh, no, that's a um, MVP meeting. Oh. Out of the 15. Tim and I both go. Yeah, so, so you should post. Yep. It needs to be posted so that we can. What time is it? 11.15. Okay. At the town hall in person. And Not... we're going to start on, at 6 on February 8th? Or... I believe so. I don't know. I If something were to change, I would let you know if there was a reason we needed to start early. Okay. All right. Well, Everybody should go home and enjoy their weekend. Yeah. Well, Valerie's here. Valerie is here. Do we just want to um, send Casey like what we support in the, in uh, Natalie's thing? Yeah. And then yeah, that way we can. That's good. Yeah. I'm good. Um, Valerie I'm might actually want to talk to you guys in her role as your health agent. Does anybody know when um, the sunny days or sunny days right is yeah sunny days is going before the planning board sunny days is scheduled to go before the planning board i believe on the 6th i okay. can check with uh amy and make sure but i think it's the 6th okay um if you give valerie two minutes i will check online if she, if she wants to address us she does actually and she's okay. she's an employee i thought i should let you know yeah hi valerie Hi, sorry, I just unmuted. Um, I was in and out. So um, I just wanted to give the board an update that all the interior violations at 357 um, E, Unit E, Greenfield Road have been corrected. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. And, and a letter will go out. It got sent to um, town attorney to review, but a letter will go out regular and certified mail and by email. And the only thing that is left is, and it really doesn't affect the interior of the property, is the exterior. He's going to be com completing that in the spring. Okay. 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 So that, that's all I have. So all that's done and we should be done with that. Thank you. So <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. You're welcome. Have a good night. Thanks, Thank Valerie. Good, good night. Valerie. Thank you. Okay. Um, Anything else? I'm I'm just going to give Casey um, the draft, and it, we've already made some corrections. It's the a Valley Health Collaborative, which that's our little group we call ourselves for the Public Health mm -hmm. Excellence Grant. It's a MOU, okay, contract, and um, so I'm just going to give it to Casey so she can look at, start making notes or whatever. Okay. Uh, okay. And also, what we have to think about what we want out of, you know, out of this extra nurse hours and the health inspector hours. So, Talk to Cindy, if she is willing to do some more stuff. Yeah. Great. I, I mean, she's loving her job and people are loving her. And, oh my gosh. Yes. And we're uh, very happy. 
was super she's, thrilled. She's, she's a wonder, wonderful person. Forty to fifty people a week. She's just great. She's just she's really, really good. I mean, when you enjoy your job and people enjoy you, and you have the freedom to do, you know, well, you know, know. The, not hounding. She just, she just makes it happen. It's wonderful. Well, thank you for having faith in absolutely making I, that happen. It made me nervous for a while, but I always <laughs> trust you. You know that. <laughs> Well, I just want to say thank you because it worked out just Appreciate like I'm hoping. It. Yes, it's all your hard work for sure. No, it was it means a lot. It was getting the right person. We had it's to true. get the right person. It's true. It's hard to hard to replace. Uh, Lisa was well, Lisa White White was fantastic. Absolutely. It's just we didn't have access to her. So yeah, when, I just when, wanted to let you know I'm going to resend the uh, schedule, the meeting schedule for uh, the budget season. Okay. Uh, I believe that finance committee is going to start next week, but I don't know that they're going to be reviewing budgets. I know they want to look at the financial indicators. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to let you know that I'll resend that so we can start plugging it into our calendars. We tried to structure it so it could be joint meetings so that you guys can attend, uh -huh. listen to yep. like we've tried to do in the past so that everybody gets the same information at the same time. Perfect. So Perfect. I'm going to shoot that out again so you guys can you guys can take a look at it. And it may be that you can't attend every meeting, but it would be really helpful yeah. to have that interaction because you guys have done so much problem solving as a select board and also with the, as the finance committee co like talks things yeah. through. Good. I think it would be useful. Brenda yep. does as well. I, I think if you post it all the time, because yeah, we don't know if we can all three right. of us can come, right. but there's chances are we always have at least two. Yeah. And um, I just want to let you know. And because I can't get into my town email, do we have a date for the capital improvement yet? I don't yet. Actually, Mark and I are supposed to talk about that. Okay. Our, our, um, oh, I just, I knew I was going to draw a blank on this. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Is our, it budget related? capital related other budgets for us to sign off on i mean i just did what i had in the packet but we should well, have you had in the packet um there's a couple that brenda and i want to talk about okay well once you round them up let us know we'll we'll jump yep. on those too okay um uh, entertain a motion to adjourn i'll make that motion uh second all those in favor tim lgi trevor mcdaniel i carolyn Nessai. thank you so much casey and everybody thank you